It's the Mixed Martial Arts Hour with... The Mixed Martial Arts Hour is back in your life. On this Monday, November 22nd, 2021. Hello again, everyone. I'm Ariel Hawani. Hope you're doing well on this Monday afternoon here in New York City. Thanksgiving week in New York City. And not only in New York City, of course, all over this great world. Everyone celebrates Thanksgiving, right? No, no one celebrates Thanksgiving outside of the United States, but I have come to enjoy it and appreciate it. That goes down on Thursday. For the rest of the world, of course, it's a regular Thursday. I come to you, my friends, sitting here today with a uh, a fulfilled heart, with a happy heart. I'm in a great mood today. I am feeling very good about life. Feeling very happy. Last night I went to Survivor Series. I was covering it, and uh, I got to go backstage a couple times. And I've always been a big stickler about bringing my family to work. Uh, I've never brought my family on trips. I've never brought my family to events. Um, I just always felt like it was not the time nor the place. There's a time for family. There's a time for work. Last night I brought my two boys to Survivor Series because they're fans and we got to watch some of the matches together, but they also got to go backstage with me. And I probably enjoyed seeing them backstage more than they were there. Uh, They got to meet a bunch of the guys and gals and they got to see me work for the first time at an event and it was just really special. Uh, A day, a night that I will never forget. I was just so happy uh, to get to experience that with them. So, um, I, I, you know, a few of the a few of the guys came up to them. Seth Rollins was incredibly nice. Jinder Mahal was incredibly nice. Becky Lynch, incredibly nice. Paul Heyman, incredibly nice. And uh, some of them were messing with them, saying, hey, security, you got to get these kids out of here. It was just really, really special stuff. Uh, a day that I will never forget. So I'm very thankful for that. I, uh, I, you know, there was a part of me over the last few years that wondered if I was too strict about this stuff and if I didn't, you know, chill out. And I think it's it's best to be professional and, and not blend the two. But this was a unique one. It was in New York. It was wrestling. They're not MMA fans or boxing fans or anything like that. The stars aligned. So very thankful that they got to be there and uh, very thankful that I got to experience that with them. So that's why I'm feeling so good about life today and why I'm feeling so good about everything going on in this world. I've got my Adelaide Crows jersey here, as you may see. It's on the desk right over there. Shout out to the Crows, uh, my new AFL team. A lot of people are very upset that I'm uh, now an official member of the Adelaide Crows. Someone asked me to uh, join the Crows. Uh, there you see the jersey right over there. And so they sent me a bunch of gear. And I told you, my allegiance can be bought. And some people are very mad about this. I don't know who's mad more, who's more mad. Uh, the people who are mad that I am fans of the Adelaide, or I'm a fan of the Adelaide Crows, or the people who are mad that I sometimes dabble in covering pro wrestling. My message to both of you people, chill the F out. Golly, lighten up, Francis's. I mean, there's more to life than all of this. And uh, if you don't want to follow along, if you don't realize that we're just all having a laugh and having a good time, I don't know what to say to you. And if you're wondering what's going on right over here, I shall address this photo later in the program. A lot of mixed emotions, a lot going on, but I do want to let you know, as always, that today's program is being brought to you by our good friends over at DraftKings. DraftKings Sportsbook is the official sports betting partner of the UFC. Please do download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today and use the code Hour for a special offer when you sign up. That's code Hour only at DraftKings. So we've got a great show lined up for all of you. And what I love so much about this show and getting to do this show again is that once again, I get an opportunity to talk to the young stars of the sport, the up and comers. We have four first timers on today's program. Been a while since we had that. And in a previous life, I was sort of encouraged not to have these type of people on my show. Uh, I'll say no more. Today, I am super pumped that I can talk to four newcomers on today's program. Four individuals who have great backstories, who are doing great things in their career, and one very recognizable name that I'm sure you all know a hell of a lot about. Uh, We will talk 
to GC later in the program. He's also in a bit of a better mood this week. I do believe he had a successful weekend. So we'll check in with Mr. GC later in the program to get his recap of the weekend that was in uh, mixed martial arts betting. Uh, we will also check in with New York Rick. Um, let me just write something right here. Uh, okay. We will also check in with uh, New York Rick and uh, get his Rick's picks for this past uh, week in MMA. So Rick's picks used to be this thing where we would, you know, um, we would have a situation where Rick would come on. He would, I think it was like social media stuff. Um, yeah, I did mute my Mac. Sorry about that. That was my mistake. Um, he would pick out like the best of social media. Now it's just going to be like three people who stood out in MMA, in social media, in the news, good people, bad people, controversial people, newsmakers, whatever. And so we'll do that with uh, New York Rick later in the program. He'll join us at around, I think it's 3.30. Yes, 3.30. Adrian Yanez will stop by. One of the four newcomers on today's program. We'll talk to him about uh, his big win on Saturday against Davy Grant, his gnarly cauliflower ear. Uh, which my good friend DC was very taken by. And uh, then he had to do all the media with the thing on it. He had it drained. Pretty, pretty gnarly stuff. Um, he's an up-and-comer. He's a rising star. He's undefeated in the UFC. His boxing is amazing. Uh, he seems to be a name that we'll be talking about for quite some time. So I'm looking forward to having Adrian Yanez. He has a great backstory. I can't wait to talk to him on the program. Sean Brady fought in the co-main event on Saturday. He had his best win of his career, at least the biggest win of his career. I know he wasn't happy with the performance, but you beat a guy like Michael Chiesa at this point when you're ranked, I think, 14th at the time. Chiesa was six or seven. That's a big-time W, and it doesn't really matter how you get that W. It's it's a big-time W for, uh, for Sean Brady, Philly's own, who sounds exactly like Eddie Alvarez, especially when he says Foyt. I had a Foyt. I can't do it correctly, but he sounds exactly like him. So I'm looking forward to talking to Sean Brady on the program. By the way, his boy, Andre Petrosky, was the one that he was trying to get to walk out to Island Boy. But as we all know, our good friend, Virna Janjiroba, swooped right in and beat them to the punch. Uh, Stipe Miocic going to be on the show. I haven't talked to Stipe in a while, in like eight or so months. Um, and we'll talk to him, of course, where he's... You know, where he's at in his career. He just became a father for the second time. Who's he fighting next? State of the heavyweight division. Perhaps a little John Jones action. There was some news regarding John Jones over the weekend that he's uh, going to be involved in a grappling match against one uh, Jake Hager, a.k.a. Jack Swagger of WWE fame back in the day. Uh, I'm told that's not a done deal and that perhaps he jumped the gun. Anyway, we'll talk to Steve about that. Mohamed Mohaev is a name that you need to know 23 and 0 as an amateur, 5 and 0, 6 and 0. It seems there seems to be a discrepancy. 6 0 and 1, whatever. He's undefeated. He's super young, early 20s, just got signed to the UFC. Everyone thinks he could be the next Habib. He's going to join us. He has a tremendous backstory as well. And so I'm really looking forward to talking to him. He's the third newcomer on the program. But for now, let us go to our uh, first guest of the day who also had a fantastic win on Saturday night or Saturday afternoon. By the way, I love the 6 p.m. main card start time. We were done. I mean, it was just amazing. We were done at like 9, if that, 8.45. It was just amazing. Uh, one of the big performers and one of the great stories of 2021 is Lupi Godinez. And she's kind enough to join us. She was... On the card on Saturday, she picked up a decision victory over Loma Luke Bonmi, and she will be joining us first on today's program via the magic of Zoom. There she is. Hola, Lupi. How are you? Hello. Muy bien. ¿Y tú? ¿Cómo estás? Uh, muy bien. Muy bien. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. And by the way, we're going with Lupi now, right? That's the official name? Yes. Yes, it Not is. Not Lupita. No, Lupi. What, what's the difference? Is that your nickname? Yeah, Lupi is a nickname. Okay. Um, well, congratulations yeah. on the win on Saturday, and congratulations on all your success. All kinds of history you made this year. Quickest turnaround, seven-day turnaround a couple months ago, and now uh, the first to get to three fights in uh, 43 days. You made a record. This is incredible stuff. Is it surreal for you, Lupi, that you're being talked about in mm -hmm. this light, you know, next to these records? That's a really big deal. 
Yeah, I mean, it's pretty awesome, you know, like is everything is happening so fast, you know. Um, I'm, I'm pretty new to the sport too and, and be doing all of this. It's pretty cool. But at the same time, you know, I'm not doing all of this to get the records or nothing like that. It's just that I love fighting so much and then it's just happening, you know. It's like, as I said it before, it's like the sherry on top. So I'm just taking it all in. If we would have talked uh, January 1st of this year, and I would have told you that the year would play out like this for you. Would you have believed me? Uh, well, about the fighting, like fighting so much. Yeah, because I'm very crazy, you know. But about like, you know, like in the UFC and I'm making history like this. Like, you know, I would be like, oh, I don't know about that. Maybe, maybe not yet. But, you know, it's happening. So we better believe it. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, on Saturday, we, like of all, you've had four fights in the UFC so far. Um, and that, uh, you know, a solid win for you. Did you like this performance the best? Was this your favorite one so far? Uh, yeah, I think I show a little bit more, you know, more that I'm more like that I'm around, uh, well, around the fighter. I think, um, I think it was a, a good fight that would match up for me to, to, to be able to show everyone, you know? Uh, one of the reasons why I love to have, you know, up and comers, newcomers on the program is so that we can learn more about your story. And I know you've talked a little bit about your story, but I think it's a fascinating backstory. So if I can ask you just a few questions about it. And I love the fact that you you moved to Canada. I am Canadian as well, Lupi. I don't know if you know this. So I have a, obviously a lot of love for the Great White North. You moved to Vancouver, but you grew up in Mexico. And then just one day your dad told you and your sisters that you guys had to move. Uh, you thought you were going to Disneyland but you found out you were not going to Disneyland. You were going to the great white North Canada, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, 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 it was like a lot of stuff happening in Mexico that, you know, my dad had to take a decision and, and we moved. He told us we're going to Disneyland. We're going to go vacations. We're going to, you know, grab all your stuff, all of that. Then uh, we are in the airport. Then, Oh, you know, there we go. We go to Canada. I'm like, well, that doesn't sound like Disneyland. Right. Then something started like clicking in my head, like what's going on. Uh, once we arrived to, to Vancouver, the next day I'm like, what's happening? Like, why are we here? What is this? You know? And then pretty much he was like, yeah, this is, you know, our new home. Like we, you know, we, we're going to start from here again. Things in Mexico were in, you know, doing very, you know, well, uh, really dangerous and stuff. So yeah, better, you know, start working hard here. So my understanding is uh, it was basically the cartel there that told your dad you probably should leave or we want some money from you, correct? Yeah, they pretty much give you an option like to, um, like to pay like a, like a monthly fee, you know? And if you don't, then they won't let you work, you know? And, and it's not very safe. Why, why him? Why, why were they coming after him? No, after him, exactly. It was just, it was, it's, it's still going on. It's like, you know, people that have businesses and stuff. Okay. And uh, at that point, mm -hmm. you're how old? 14 and a bit. 14. And you have two sisters? Three sisters. Three sisters. No brothers? No brothers. All girls. And uh, your mom, is she in the picture? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. And so you guys moved to Canada and uh, my understanding is you, you lived in like a hotel? Yeah, yeah, we we arrived in a hotel where my dad started like paying half with money and half with like painting little jobs here and there because it was really expensive and we came with pesos too, right? Um, then yeah, I started from there. Then he 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 had to learn how to do everything again. Like you know, um, he used to sell cars, he used to sell houses, all of that stuff. So he never had to paint and you know, doing stuff with his hands, like, uh, like a handyman, right? Right. Then he had to learn how to be a handyman because that's how you start in Canada, you know, or in the North. And uh, slowly, you know, like it was a lot of tears, a lot, it was a lot of hard work. And uh, yeah, I slowly, um, you know, I started building, uh, building up. And, and right now, I mean, I'm in the UFC, my sisters are wrestling for Canada. My parents, you know, their jobs are great. They're doing great. They have a house, they, their house, they, their, their cars. And, you know, it's just really, really nice to see the hard work, you know, pays off. When you came to Canada, you didn't speak English, right? You couldn't speak any English. 
no, no, none of us. None of us speak any English. Wow. And were you uh, cleaning bathrooms at the hotel? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, was I know your whole life story here, Loopy. Yeah, I'm telling it for I you. Know. It's amazing. <laughs> I mean, this is incredible stuff. You're a young girl. You can't speak English, yeah. and you're just cleaning bathrooms at a hotel. Was this terrifying yeah, for you? Yeah, houses. Yeah, of course, because, you know, when we were in Mexico, we never had to go through anything like that. It was, it was a completely different life. So now I moved to a different country and, and it's a completely, completely different life that you will never imagine that having being here you end up again down here and then you have to go up again you know it's no easy thing to do that's for sure and you know plus you know they have a little respect for my for my mom and dad that they you know they did it with four kids and you know then that's why i'm a big fan of you know doesn't matter where you are in life always be humble because you never know what's going to happen tomorrow in terms of uh, where your heart lies, I know you, you represent both the Mexican flag and the Canadian flag, but because of the way in which things ended for your family in Mexico, do you, do you have a greater affinity for Canada who accepted you guys? I, I mean, both countries are extremely um, important for me because I grew up in, 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 in Mexico and I have family there and I love my culture and I love the people and, you know, it's just so great. And, you know, for the other side, Canada, where they opened the doors for me and my family and, and we had the opportunity to start from zero, you know? Yeah. And so, by the way, just curious, uh, how, like your family was just able to move there? They, they didn't ask you for paperwork or anything like that? You were just able to have bags and move over there? Uh, well, of course, it's paperwork and, and all of that. It's years and it's okay. uh, a work permit. And, and, you know, my dad had to work really hard. Um, yeah, it was a lot of hard work. Are you a Canadian it's not citizen that easy. now? Yeah. Wow, yeah. that is amazing. Your whole family. Yeah. And, yeah. and so who introduces you to martial arts along this way? Actually, permanent resident. Permanent I'm resident, okay. I don't have my passport yet, yeah. Okay. But I'm applying for it soon, yeah. That's it's, like I mean, me. It's been really busy, but I'll... That's like yeah. me. I, I'm a permanent resident in the U.S. I don't have my passport yet. So it's... Yeah, I, soon. I feel, I feel it. I feel work it. On that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, who introduces you to martial arts? Um, since I was a little kid, I've always been really, like, into, like, really rough and doing stuff like that. And... And I, 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 also, I, I, I used to say that I wanted to do, do WWE. And then um, when I moved to, to Canada, I was with my boyfriend watching, uh, watching the fights. And then I was like, oh, I want to do that. Then he's like, if you want to do that, you, you better start training, you know, go to, go to my gym. I went, well, I went to a couple of classes. I told my coaches I want to fight, but I wasn't ready at all. So it's pretty much, it was just, by watching it on TV and then I'm like, I want to do it. So I start training and I just ne didn't let it go. You know, I, I didn't know anything. I was really bad. Even if you talk to one of my coaches, they will, they thought I was going to ever fight because I was really bad. <laughs> okay. And so yeah. at what point do you start to believe like you can actually do this as a career? Mm, like, uh, maybe like three, three, four years in. Okay. Three, yeah. four years in training. Yeah, more like three. Yeah. Okay. And and early, like it wasn't very easy for you, right? Like even in your amateur career, did you start to doubt yourself yeah. that maybe you had made a mistake? Uh well, I was I was young, so I I was like, oh like, well, I can always do something else, right? right? But yeah, like if you see the record, my record wasn't the best as an amateur fighter, right? Um, I was, I had a hard time. Like I would do really well at the gym. Everything was fine at the gym. But once I start, you know, in, in the fighting, when I will go in the cage, I will get so nervous. I couldn't perform or something, you know, or I'll be winning. And then I look, and then I, I try really hard to lose the fight. <laughs> so it's just things that I, I learned, you know, and I've been training only for six years. So, and two of them are just like, super high intense training like every day because I had nothing. Right. And how did your family yeah. feel about you doing this, you know, as a living? Did your, did your parents, were they happy? Were they supportive? I mean, of course they're super happy and, and, and supported that and what I love, you know, and I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm doing really well. 
And my dad always says, like, oh, you're just like me, you know, because when he thinks of something and wants to do something, he won't let it go. He will do it, you know. And he's like, oh, you're just like me or whatever. But yeah, they're super happy. But of course, I get super nervous and it's nerve wracking for them. And every time I get a fight and it's, it's like, oh. But now that I fight every weekend, it's yeah. like they don't have time to get nervous. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. And, and so your sisters wrestle for Canada? Yeah, they, they're they they're most likely going to go to the Olympics in 2024. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And what about your third your third sister? What does she do? She's normal. She <laughs> She's will normal. marry, have kids. Okay, she wants nothing to do with will... this. Exactly, yeah. She's in Georgia. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and you wrestle as well, right? Yeah, I mean, I... My sisters are the wrestlers. I'm more like the MMA fighter. Okay. I, I did a tournament, you know, a, a couple of weeks ago before, before one of the fights, just to, you know, just to keep busy. Why not? And I did well. <laughs> How did you do? Good. Uh, I had, I think I have five match, matches and I lost one. Wow. And she's the third in the, she's the third in the world. So I can complain about that. Well, you try to go to the Olympics. Me? Oh, no. No? I, I love MMA. Okay. Um, I wonder if you can even go to the Olympics if you fight in MMA. I guess not because you're technically pro Oh, now. no, because you're pro. Yeah, pro, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I don't yeah. think you can. Yeah, and yeah. Right. Um, and uh, where? so where do you train out of now? Do you train out of Canada or somewhere else? Mm -hmm. I train at Titan Training Center in Vancouver. Oh, so are you in Vancouver right now? Right now I'm in Guadalajara. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> I didn't realize yeah. that. Very, very different than, uh, yeah, I'm all over the place. than uh, Vancouver. How did you deal with the winters when you moved to Canada? It was tough in the beginning. Now uh, I like it. I like the cozy, you know, stay home with the big jacket. Like I just, you know, you just like, I, I learned to embrace things, you know, when it's not going your way or stuff like that. Um, you got to embrace it and just, you know, be happy, I guess. Um, and it's one of like, my boyfriend was a, is a big a big fan of that because when I started like training hard, like I will get super tired or or you know kind of like like painful or whatever. But you just gotta embrace it and then work with it. Sure. So it's kind of how I'm taking life, like just embrace whatever it is and you know like make it better. Yeah, sort of like when they ask you to fight, you know, twice in the span of seven days. Could you tell us, like, how did that come about? Because it's very rare that they would ask someone. They've got enough fighters on the roster to where someone isn't usually asked to do this. How did it come about for you? Uh, well, after my fight, I went back to Georgia. I, I was in Georgia at the time visiting my sister and, and the kids. And then I was still in shape, you know, I was working out, running. And um, I just go, they called from, from Jason House, great manager, great manager, by the way. And he's like, hey, Lupi, they're asking if you want to fight. I was like, when? He's like, this, like, next, this week, weekend. And then I was like, okay, yeah, but just let me talk to my coaches to, to see everything, you know, how it's going to play out. And then, yeah, I say, okay. My coaches say, okay. Then, then I just left the next day to, to Vegas. Wow. What day was this? <laughs> I got, so I fought on Saturday. Yeah. I flew to Georgia on Sunday. Then I was in Georgia Monday, Tuesday, and I flew out on Wednesday. Wild. That is wild. Do you, <laughs> I know. It, it didn't go your way, unfortunately, that second fight. Do you regret taking it? Like, do you think you win that fight if you had more time? I never did anything I do. Honestly, I'm glad I did it and I will do it again. Okay. Um, are you done for mm -hmm. the year? Uh, I don't know. We will see, you know. Uh, we will see what happens in December. There is right. double cards. If not, then I'll just wait whenever they want me back. Okay. It's uh, just, you know, I'm just working my way and they can call me and I'll do it. This is great. I mean, you're on call. You're reliable. The UFC loves people like you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, why not? That's my job, right? <laughs> sure. You got to be in shape. You don't get uh, you don't get out of shape. By the way, I was going to ask you if you had gone back to Mexico. Clearly, you have been back to Mexico. You're in Guadalajara. What about your dad? Has he been back? Mm, oh, yeah, yeah. We came like three, four years ago. Okay. Yeah, four years ago to visit my family and stuff. Is that, uh, you know, after 13, 12 years, uh, I'm in Canada, you know, everything, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. Right. By the way, why did he choose Vancouver of all places? 
better weather because everyone else, everywhere else is even colder, right? Yes, like, yes. Really cold. Yes, yes. Um, and why not like the USA? We, we didn't have the visa to mm. go to the U.S. at that time. We applied later. Once we were in Vancouver, after we got our papers and everything, we applied for the visa and yeah. So what you're saying is Canada is a better country and they're more inclusive and they bring in people in their time of need, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is, yeah. I'm just well, messing I'm around. I'm just I'm messing saying, around. Well, I'm not saying that, but oh, like, I'm just messing uh, around. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Um, and and I see that you train with Alexa Grasso, right? Yeah, I train. I train with her, uh, and then with all the team here. Right. Okay. Uh, and as far as when you were coming up, who did you aspire to be like? Like, who, which type of fighter did you say? This is the type of fighter I want to be like. This is the type of style that I want to emulate. Well, at the time I was doing uh, judo a little yeah. bit. And then at that time it was Ron, Ronda Rossi was the one uh, growing. So I was like, oh, I really like this girl, you know, judo. And I kind of like, like I kind of went with it, sure. with her. And then, yeah. Okay. Um, you're whispering right now. Is there something going on? Are you not supposed to be talking? What's happening? Oh, no. No, no, no. Is there a class? Went low, so oh, okay. Like, All right. No, no, no. Are you at the okay. gym? Where are you right now? Yeah, I'm at a uh, gym, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, well, Lupi, uh, congratulations on all your success. I feel weird calling you Lupi, if I'm being honest. Like, it feels, like, too familiar. Like, it's like we're, we just met, and I'm calling you Lupi, like, you're by your nickname. But that's what you want. This is what, this is what you're asking for. Yeah, yeah, okay. it's great. It's okay. great. I love all right, it. all right. Well, uh, congratulations <laughs> on your success. Congratulations on a great year. Congrats on your win. And I look forward to seeing what you do next come uh, 2022, or maybe next month, if they call you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. No problem. Great to have you on. There she is, Lupi Godinez, who uh, had a big win on Saturday and uh, had that crazy story where she fought twice in the span of seven days and then uh, three times in the span of 43 days. Both, by the way, a record. Seven days, obviously, a record no one's fought uh, that many times. In the span of seven days, obviously. Well, okay. Uh, it is worth noting that in the early days when there were tournaments, people obviously fought more than once. Um, a card, you know, Hoist Gracie, Ken Shamrock, those guys, back in the pre-Zufa days, but in the uh, the modern era, if you will, no one has fought twice in the span of seven days, and no one has fought three times in the span of 43 days. So that is very exciting. And uh, she is a, uh, a name to keep your eye on. Big win for her on Saturday. She improves to 7-2. and two. And uh, as she said, her amateur career didn't really go as planned. But then all of a sudden in, in MMA, she uh, won five straight, lost a split decision to Jessica Penne in her UFC debut, won her next fight via armbar, then took the fight against Luana Carolina on seven days notice, less than seven, five days notice, four days notice. Lost that fight, but came back against Loma on Saturday and uh, and won that fight. Saturday also saw the return of Terrence Crawford. Big win for him over Sean Porter. And uh, afterwards, Sean Porter actually retired. And so it was a busy day in MMA. Uh, late last week, as we move along, later in the program, we'll talk to a couple other big winners from Saturday's card, Sean Brady and Adrian Yanez. But late last week, in MMA, we got word that one of the brightest young prospects in MMA, a man that I've been hearing about for quite some time, born on July 30th, 2000. 2000! I wonder if this is the first person born in the year 2000 on this program. Could be. Born on July 30th, 2000. On July 30th, 2000, I was 18. I mean, I feel old. Anyway, uh, we got word, I think it was Wednesday, yeah, Wednesday morning, that Mohamed Mokhaev, originally from Dagestan, born in Dagestan, uh, now repping not only Dagestan, but also England, Manchester to be exact, um, had signed with the UFC, 23-0, as an amateur, and you love to see that kind of activity as an amateur. Uh, Two-time IMAF champion, 
and undefeated as a pro. A little discrepancy as to what his pro record is, 5-0 and and 1-0 contest, 6-0 and and 1-0 contest, whatever the case may be, an absolute stud, a massive rising star. His manager, Tim Simpson, has been talking to me about him for the last two years, saying that he's going to be a future star, future face of the UFC, doing massive things, most recently fought for Brave CF. He is now a member of the UFC roster. And this is a really big deal for the promotion to have someone obviously from Dagestan, but also to have someone from uh, from England doing big things. Uh, settled, uh, went to St. John Rigby Wigan. And a lot of people are very excited about his uh, UFC debut. We don't know when his debut is going to be. There has been some talk, by the way, of the UFC returning to England in March of next year. Finally, there's a lot of fighters who have been patiently waiting to uh, to fight in England. Of course, we talked to Arnold Allen about that last week. How great was Arnold Allen on the program last week? That was a lot of fun. And so that could be a good place for his return. It could also be a good place for Mohamed Mohaev's UFC debut. Uh, like Lupi Godinez, he has a fantastic backstory, a, a very uh, inspiring backstory. Left Dagestan when he was 12 with his father. They were in a refugee camp in Liverpool. Uh, didn't have the, uh, the easiest upbringing, but stayed the course. And uh, and found MMA, found fighting, found combat sports, found martial arts. And I, I kid you not, I mean, this is one of those guys that people have been uh, waiting to see take that next step for quite some time. Uh, a two-time IMF Junior World Champion. IMF, in case you don't know, is the International Mixed Martial Arts Federation. They do a very good job of growing and producing and fostering and developing young talent in MMA. They are the global governing body for amateur mixed martial arts and hoping to get Olympic recognition. If anyone's able to get Olympic recognition, it's going to be those guys, uh, the International Mixed Martial Arts Federation. And he's one of their, their best products byproducts. And so like I said, the the winning streak is uh, 29 fights. I've seen some places that said 30, but uh, this is a name that we're going to be talking about for quite some time. And so another one of those guys who has yet to make his debut, who is super duper young, 21, born in uh, the year 2000, I do believe as of right now, because he is officially a part of the UFC roster, I believe he is the youngest fighter on the roster. Uh, his last fight was in September, won uh, via rear naked choke. Prior to that, uh, there was a no contest, an accidental groin kick, ended the fight in the first round. And for the most part, he is uh, he is finishing guys. And so this is huge for the UFC, not only because of the background, not only because of the Dagestani ties, not only because of the English ties, but also, let's be honest, you need some fresh blood, some exciting blood, some some prospects that people are talking about at flyweight. There have been, you know, a few of them over the years, but it always kind of feels like, you know, they're coming up as lightweights, as welterweights, at light heavyweight, heavyweight, middleweight. Very rarely is it at flyweight. And so all these things combined, in addition to the backstory, uh, makes Mohamed Mohayev one of the names to look out for in 2022. And so without further ado, let us go back to the Zoom machine and go all the way to Bahrain, where Mohamed Mohayev is joining us. Salam alaikum, my brother. How are you? Wa alaikum salam, Arin. I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing great. It's great to have you on the show, my friend. Uh, two years. Thank you. Your manager, Tim Simpson, has been uh, hounding me to have you on the show has been telling me you're going to be the face of the UFC. You are the next big thing in the UFC, and now you are finally signed to the UFC, and so it's great to have you on just days after this big news. Be honest with me, Mohammed. Did you think it would come so early at 21, this early in your pro career? Did you think that you would get signed this this fast? 
Yes, I actually said in an interview, like, you're going to see me at the end of um, end of this year, you're going to see me in UFC. And, uh, you know, my dream is become youngest UFC flyweight, DV, uh, flyweight champion. And uh, I have to I have to go on the risk and go for it, you know. Uh, and I, I've got not, not much left. Yes. What, what would it be? Two years you have left, right? Two, maybe two, two and a little bit, you know? Yes. Uh, in fact, a couple of years ago, you tweeted to Dana White. No, did you tweet or you sent him a DM? You sent him a DM that you would, DM. Be, you would be signed by 2022, right? I think we have the screenshot right over here. You uh, you pulled out the receipts. There it is. My my eyesight is horrible. What does that say? January uh, of 2018. January 13th. Yeah. And did he follow you? No. Come on, Dana. Come on. I, I have to... I have to take him down and I have to smash him when I see him. But he's, he's our boss, you know, so we have to look after him. Yes, yes, that is true. What prompted you to do that? I mean, at that point, you're what? Uh, you know, 18? 18, and I didn't even become world champion. I didn't even compete in IMF that time. But when I competed in IMF at the end of the year of 2018, wow, that's like, got me like huge, like, uh, in, like um, pushing, you know, motivation. And I knew I could do it, you know. Right. Um, there's a lot of people who are very excited about you, and obviously they've been talking and following you since you were an amateur. There have been some times where, you know, rising stars, UFC calls them and says, hey, you want to come join the UFC? And they're like, no, not ready just yet. Give me a couple more years. Was there any part of you that felt, give me a couple more years or a couple more fights, and then I want to join the UFC? I believe, you know, my last opponent is 29, 20, 29 years old. It's not nothing to do with age, I believe. Um, you know, maybe people say, you know, he the monster. Hey, my, my last opponent, 29 years old, with 15 professional fights. Mm. And I, I finished him in second round. And his very good name also, uh, Blaine Andriscal, who fights out of SBG Island. And you, you, you do know him. And then my opponent before him, it was Abdul Hussein, who actually, I am a senior world champion. And was like ten and zero as an amateur, and like seven and one as a professional, and and I dominate this guy also. So, like strength wise, like in the gym, I spar with featherweight guys who who actually in, in big 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 organizations, and I still take him down and I, and I hold him down, you know. I love it. Uh, so, is it thirty in a row or twenty nine in a row? What are we going with? I think thirty fights. Thirty fights. Uh, thirty. I think, 30 fights and like one no contents or something. But one, one contents is, is, come on, you know, it's, it's, it, it is what it is. Everything is written, I believe. Maybe I lose this fight. Maybe I, I get some injuries. Maybe I never compete. So I'm not even uh, angry about this fight. It's, it's okay. It's happening. Happened. I said, I moved on and then I fought two months after, two or three months. Uh, your, your backstory is a fascinating one, my friend. So you, you're born in uh, Dagestan. And when you were 12 years old, was it just you and your father that left Dagestan, or was it? Uh, did you do you have any siblings? No, just me, me and my father. You know, we came to UK uh, as a refugee, and then uh, we based in Liverpool like, for 30 days in refugee training camp. We moved to Wigan. So that's where I went to school and college. That's Wigan is between Liverpool and Manchester. It's a small town. That's where I went to school and went college for a little bit, and then. I, I just like moved to Manchester for training and I still train in Liverpool in the mornings and just tra traveling around. And my father live, still lives in Wigan. So it's just traveling around more fast, you know? Right. Uh, why did you guys leave Dagestan? You know, my, my dad had uh, uh, political uh, problems and uh, we, we, have to, we have to leave. Okay. Do you have siblings? What is this? Uh, brother, sister. No. No, okay, just you. And and uh, where was your mom? Uh, my mom passed away, you know, in 2012. Uh, Before you moved? Yes. Oh, could I ask, how did she pass away? Uh, there's, there's something I'll tell you after, you know? Okay, I understand. So it's just you and your father, and you're in a refugee yes. camp in Liverpool. What, what was that like? 2012, uh, it was rough, you know. It it, it's, it, it was like five pounds a day. Oh my every, God. every person used to get, and uh, it's like either you buy clothes, either you buy, either you buy um, food, you know. So it's just between us. It was like ten pounds a day. It was uh, like everybody has same kitchen, all the refugees in one kitchen, and like same bath. 
It was it, it is it, it was hard. Also, I couldn't travel for five years. I couldn't leave any uh, UK for five years since 2012 till 2017. I was waiting for decision from the Home Office. I just stuck, you know. I missed so many opportunities to compete for Great Britain in, in wrestling and stuff. And then, um, actually, um, in 2017, I was about to get deported from UK. It was that situation. So, you know, my life changed a lot, you know. Wow. And where did they want to send you? Back to Russia? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Why? Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's home office, you know. They, they, they choose decision who to leave, who to go. But I actually, after I got signed with UFC, next day I received my citizenship, you know. I was like, <laughs> I, to be honest, I forgot about UFC. I'm like, wow, no way. I could go to America. I can't go to America now. And it's like, it's crazy, you know. It's... Uh, it's, it was so excited. Yeah, I saw that you shared the screen grab. Yeah. Um, do you think you got the citizenship because of the UFC news? I don't, I don't know. I made that application, but my application was like two and a half years earlier than I was supposed to do. I just I went for the hope, you know, and uh, I made all the uh, supporting letters, you know, uh, you know, my, my brother's twins, uh, they, they, they made support letters for me and, and Middleton. And I believe this also helped. So when you're growing up in Dagestan, do you wrestle at all? Do you compete in any kind of martial arts, combat sports? To be honest, I went, I went, I used to go to wrestling, but the, you know, when there was competition time, they didn't pick me, you know, there was like, you know, the, there's always like, there's connections. I, I never had any relatives like that going to push me. I didn't have big names in my family who are going to put work in for me. I had to do everything myself. So when, they, when I see they didn't pick me for the competition, I'm like, I'm going to the different sports. I went to karate, you know. I went to karate because it's, it's small in, in Dagestan, but they also take you to competition. And, and, and I start winning some tournaments in, in Dagestan for karate, you know. Okay. And so at what point do you start to think, like, I want to be an actual fighter? When does that start? I think 2013. When, when um, I, 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 I've been told by people, if you actually, like, uh, compete, do something for UK. I'm like, what? I don't have documents. What should I do? It's like, imagine I'm, I was at that situation. I cannot travel, nothing. And I see the guys who I beat at the British Wrestling Championships in, in UK. These guys was traveling instead of me. I'm like, what, what to do? So that, that's when I, I'm, I start slowly moving to MMA because I didn't find any challenge in UK for the wrestling. I was like seven, eight time British champion. And then uh, I, I just moved to uh, MMA because it was like a lot of competitions, tournaments, start competing in grappling and uh, also like uh, try to get my name so name can work for me, you know, get my name out there so I can, and also supporting my people, you know, who actually supported me. I understand that when you were in school, when you were in Wigan, uh, you were a bit of a troublemaker, yes? Yes. What, what kind of trouble? Were you getting into fights and stuff? I think so because fights like take him down just let him know let him know my power you know yeah and just let him go because it's a lot of cameras in school yeah. and especially without documents i couldn't make any trouble right also maybe maybe i get fights because my mentality is different if somebody makes world language now i live in uk 10 years it's different you know but before i was like somebody make like some something joke i, I, I go for it you know but now I come down and uh, my circle is different. My circle understands this, this is wrong to joke and this is right. And so that, that's what my circle is about now. But that time is, is okay. My PE teacher got me out of the trouble, you know. Oh, really? Uh, your teacher was the one who said you need to start doing something else to channel this energy? No, like he, he was a PE teacher. And like when, when I was doing like a, playing rugby or football after school, when, when I get into fights, he was like, he take me to classroom, give me last chance. Every time he give me last chance and uh -huh. it was like unlimited last chance. But I felt like these guys want to keep me. They, they want to look af after me. That's why I had to, in my head, I had to calm down to respect what, they, what they're doing for me. You know? Did you feel like a lot of kids when you first came to, by the way, could you speak English when you, when you came in, 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 in uh, when you were eight, nine years no. ago, so 2000, you couldn't speak any English? No, no. Wow. Did kids pick on you? No, not pick. Nobody pick. You know, the school was safe. It's just, um, how to say, 
it's just you know like sometimes jokes and I couldn't make friends because like I didn't understand uh, people. But there was there wasn't like sometimes you know so you always in school some somebody older want to pick on you. Like when I was in year eight, I was smashing year eleven guys. You know, I, I didn't care. You know, right. so yeah. Um, and and by the way, why did you guys choose England? Uh, I don't know. I have to ask my father. Okay. Know? All right. Yeah. Uh, your father is still around. Yeah, he's he's around. Um, then there's like a vegan youth youth zone um, uh, built by vegan athletics. You know, that's where my father sent me. He said that there was like fifty pence for entry, uh-huh. and then when you go in, you could you could go to football, boxing, wrestling. There was everything inside. Wow. So he used, he used to t- he used to tell me, listen, I give you twenty pound a week if you go there. So it's like an earning for me, you know. So so because he was getting like you know like refugee benefits, and I didn't get anything. So he said, I give you these wages, but you you must go there every day. So I went there, and then that's how I, I see I, I could become like uh, you know something big, you know. What does he say about this? The fact that you're now this big time prospect signed to the UFC, everyone talks about you. Is he shocked? He's, he's shocked. He's shocked, but he, he, I think he knew. You know, in, in 2018, when I left college, me and my father, father fall out. Um, oh. Me and father didn't speak maybe uh, like maybe half a year or something like this because I left college to, to do sports. I went. To, I asked college, can I, do, can I go to world championships? They said, no, your attendance will go down. I said, okay, this is my life. I'm going, you know. So if so, somebody stopped my dream, I'm, I'm like, no, no, this is my dream. So I went to world championships. I got the gold. I left college. I live with, with guys in one room in like a studio in Manchester, you know, with like we're sleeping on the floor, three of us and one older guy sleeping on a bed. It was like a wow. small room. And, and that's, that's actually, uh, it was, it was a tough period for me, but I had, I had like right people who, who supported me, you know. Like mentally, I just had like friends who I can call. That's it was enough for me. No? So, so you and your dad didn't speak for six months. Yeah, something like this. Man. And how did you, yeah. you know, come back together? You know, when I win gold medal, I, I came, I came to him. Um, uh, everything, what, whatever he was paying for bills for the house for electricity, whatever you know, I took on my account. I could look after him. I was happy, you know. So I showed the medal. He was he's still, he's like, he finished two universities, my father. He was more about education and stuff. But I knew, I knew I, I, I didn't have enough power in, in English-wise to go to Oxford or Cambridge. He went to that level, but in my head, I know realistically, I cannot reach to that level. I have to get loans from the university and it's not my life. I see students finishing universities and doing another jobs, you know, like, constructions or something right. like this. I'm like, I don't want to be another student sitting on the lawns and sitting, eating like crisps all day, every day, all day. You know? Yes, yes. Um, so now he's okay. Now he's at peace with your decision. Yeah. Uh, he's got Instagram now. He's like uh, following everyone. You know? I love it. I love it. <laughs> but by the way, um, when you win the gold medal in IMF, do you get money for that? Uh, it, not, not in 2018. 2018, um, to go there, I actually needed money myself. Sometimes wow. I work security. Uh, sometimes I work like uh, cleaning offices. And then I didn't have enough money, so I set up go, my, my coach set up GoFundMe. You know this, uh, yeah. like yeah. people put money. And uh, uh, Jez and Arf is uh, two my uh, my very good friends, my brothers. You now I can call them like uh, they 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 seen this. They like hey, remove this go fund. What you doing? You know, so they supported me to go there. Wow. They sent me money and went there and uh, got the gold medal. And um, in 2019, um, uh, His Highness, you know, Sheikh Khalid, he, he gave me $10,000 when I won the gold medal as well. That was like huge for me, you know? Wow. And so is that why you're in Bahrain right now? Yes, I'm here. Also, uh, my wife doing visa here. So, you know, for UK, uh, uh, she, she's doing visa for UK. That's why I'm here. And, uh, uh, I'm probably gonna do a camp here or maybe come back to UK. So I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make plan this week what I'm gonna do. Actually, maybe go to Thailand. Now I'm British citizen. Actually, maybe go to Miami training there. So I've got like a lot of options on my table right now. Wait a second, Mohammed, you're married? Yes, I'm married one year now. Golly, married? You're 21. Wow. <laughs> how how yeah. did you meet your wife? 
Uh, relatives, you know, relatives. Yeah, but, yeah. Right. Wow, you're you're a very mature young man. Well done. Um, I, I have to. I have to stay focused. You know. Yes. I have to stay focused. Too much distractions. I see many fighters who get in the head that they are big stars. They they need somebody next to them to calm them down. You know. Yes. So I need I needed some person like this. Now, obviously, Dagestan. You think of Dagestan. You think of Khabib. Yeah. Do you have a relationship with Khabib? We we spoke a couple times, but like not not very close, you know, not not really close. Like last time, probably met him like in two thousand eighteen at the World Championships when uh, when I went to final against a Japanese guy, but not really because maybe because we're different managers. Yes, yes. Uh, I think most people would have thought you would have signed with Ali, right? With dominance, you did not. No, I I, I did it, and I'm really happy about that. And uh, why didn't you? Because I have uh, at that point I had all managers like messaging me, yeah. and uh, I sit down with my coaches. I said, "Listen, what was the best choice? We sit, we had the contract of everybody, and we choose we choose the what what's gonna be good for our career." I remember when you signed with Paradigm, it was huge news because I think everyone thought that you would go in a different route. What kind of feedback did you get when you did that? It was like um, probably like eighty percent positive, twenty percent negative. But it's uh, um, it's what what's good for my career. I'm doing what's not not what's what people like or they don't like. I th- I think Paradigm is is the best management in in this game. Mm. Um, and another thing that I think is super impressive about you are the amateur fights. Um, yeah, you know, because yeah. of I, IMAF, but still, 23 amateur fights. You don't often see this in MMA. Uh, you see it in boxing, but not in MMA. Would you suggest to younger fighters, you see a lot of younger fighters, one amateur fight, two amateur fight, and then they go straight. Would you suggest amateur young fighter out there to spend more time in the amateur ranks before they make the jump to, uh, to pro? And if so, why? 100%. I really want to talk about this uh, because a lot of uh, fighters in UK, they have like shows, you know, MMA shows. I actually competed in them. And then uh, fighters get excited too much. They sell tickets. They doing this show. But sport-wise, this is, this is okay. But sport-wise, IMF is the, is the platform where the athletes should compete. It's four or five fights a week. You know, this, wow. this is not easy. This is not easy. These elite, elite fighters, I believe, I had some two for fights in amateur than actually professional. And, uh, you know, like my previous opponent, prof- professional, 15 professional fights, I submitted them in second round. In amateur, I went most of my fight distance. And um, uh, this is a huge platform. You go to different country, you get medical check, you get anti-doping uh, control. You, you, you're going through, like, if, if you're getting knocked down in your fight and you still win next day, you cannot compete, you know? So that's like, they're taking care of uh, health. There's a shin pads, no blood, no coats, and um, and um, actually, like a team team wise, you get ready mentally also for the for the professional leagues. And I, I believe that I'm up to, now they have world championships in Abu Dhabi in January. It's gonna be huge. I, I'm gonna be there also. Okay. Um... I'm at really not competing. No, no, no. I know. Yes, of course. You've graduated, but they they really want to help try to get uh, MMA to the Olympics. Do you think we'll ever see that? Do you think we'll see that in the next decade, two decades? I think twenty twenty eight, maybe. Really, that soon? Wow. I believe so. Why? Why are you so confident? Uh, if they, if they included like Muay Thai, come on. What's Muay Thai? Is no in. It's, I, I, I don't I don't think it's safer than MMA. MMA is most is safer than boxing, I believe. I just been in Serbia for the World Championships, and and the guys hit getting hit so much in the head. Whereas MMA, it's like it's all around the body. You know, it's if you're tired, you go you go you go for like uh, grappling and stuff. Whereas in boxing, you cannot do this. You stand and you get a hit even if you're losing. Mm. But um, I think MMA is safe sport, especially if I'm of uh, the, the way I'm off though. So have you been back to Dagestan since you left? No, I haven't been there in t- 10 years. I couldn't travel there because of my citizenship. And now after this fight, I'm going to be there. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, and uh, will you, have you ever been to the States? No. Wow. Okay. So maybe Miami, you said you're going to go to Miami to train. 
Yes, if if I go there, probably like uh, Manchester top top team or Sanford MMA, one of them. So we'll see. Decided my team. Do you, your team is based where? My my team is my team. You know, there's a base in Ta- Tiger Muay Thai, uh-huh. like KHK uh, in Liverpool in uh, and Manchester, and so it's like I have I have a team. Uh, I have a group chat. There's a Johnny boxing Johnny uh, boxing coach. In Thailand, for example, strength conditioning coach Woody in Thailand, you know them, right? Like Hickman Brothers, and yeah. the, here in Japan, like Eldar Renat, Dean Garnett in UK, and uh, Oleg Wrestling Coach. So I have like big teams. So in the group chat, I'm like, what, what, to do, what's we do, what we're doing next, and that's when we decide. Um, you said uh, after this next fight, I will go over here or there, and you kind of smiled. Do you have your next fight? Do you have the debut? Do you know when it is? Do you know who's it against? Hopefully March and uh, hopefully against this guy, uh, Koji, sec- second name. Durden. Durden, hopefully. And if, he, if he accepts, I want to. I really want to smash him. And I see a lot of um, my supporters t- tweeted smash him. And I'm like, hey, if people want to see this, I'm, 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 that's what I'm here for. Is it because of what he said in his post-fight interview on Saturday? Also, also he, he apologized, but... Listen, if somebody don't shake your hand, you, you just call him something. I don't want to swear, but you call him like idiot, you know? But you don't go to a race-wise. You know? right. Like race-wise is lower level mentality. Come on. It's like, uh, the, the, uh, you know, now I have a lot of circle with very rich people and uh, like who works in, in the top places. We, we never talk about like race. I think it's, it's lower level people that talk about race and stuff like this. I, I don't think... I don't believe racism should exist if you have a brain, you know. Mm. But if if you don't have it, it's it's always gonna be there. And so there's a rumor that the UFC is gonna come back to England in March. Would you like to fight in England in your debut? Of course, of course. So you'd I'm rather take over that. You'd rather England than say Las Vegas or something for the debut. You want it to be at your home. Yeah, anywhere, anywhere. But of course, UK gonna be huge. I have a like, huge support there. And uh, I'm gonna be youngest fighter on the card everywhere. And so, like, uh, I'm gonna. Uh, this is first time in my career where I get like actually time to get prepared for the fights. All my fights go- was like this. It was like t- a wrestling t- competition in between jujitsu competition. My fight. Then I go to camp again straight like Monday after, and then it was it was like this. I was like overtrained some some mm-hmm. point, and now I'm I'm concentrated on my on my debut. For those that have never seen you fight, whose style do you, does yours mo, you know emulate the, the the most? Who do you who do you fight the most like? I, w- I would say similar to Michael Chandler. Oh, that's good, Michael Chandler. Yeah, yeah. A little wrestling, a little striking. Kickboxing, striking. They don't know what, what I'm doing. Everybody knows I, I'm gonna take the not take them down, but they cannot just concentrate on take down the fence. They're gonna get smashed in the face, you know. <laughs> so, I love the way uh, Dagestani people always say "smash." Yeah, it seems to be like <laughs> a, a common a common term uh, that all the Dagestanis use. Uh, you predicted the Dana White 2022. You're in the UFC. Your prediction came true. So, give us a prediction. Month, year, you become UFC champion. By twenty twenty, by end of twenty twenty three, I'm gonna be a UFC champion, youngest UFC champion. Wow! Just call me Mister, Mister, Mister Mystic. <laughs> Mystic Mohammed. Mystic. <laughs> Have you met Connor, by the way? Who, of course, is affiliated with Paradigm. Have you talked to him? No, I haven't. I haven't met him. Okay. Do you want to meet him? He has sent me a message. Um, when, when I was fighting in March, he wished me all the best. I, I replied, thanks. But uh, um, to be honest, uh, I, I really want to ask him why he talk bad about Dagestan. You know, I really want to ask him why why everybody uh, talk about every person. You know, I want to see face to face. I want to see his energy. Because I really, like my managers and uh, really everybody talk saying like he's, he, he isn't same like he's on the media, you know. So... I just want to feel myself this energy. I don't have to prove anybody. I don't have to be this on the camera. I want to ask him about my people. My people is, uh, 
it's business is good, but my people is my people. You know, I want to ask him why everybody. You know, just pick the person, tell him it's not good to call out the whole nation. There's always all in Ireland. There's also bad people. There's also good people. My boxing coach is Irish, and uh, I, I you, you cannot just say Dagestan are bad. You know, you cannot say this. This is wrong. He, he has to apologize about this. Okay, and you would say this to him. 100% I will say, I don't have to be camera, I'm, I'm saying, you know, don't have to be this show, big drama, I, I, want, to, I want to feel this energy, you know. Well, you're, you're a very impressive young man, Mohammed. I wish you nothing but the best. It's great to have you on the show for the first time. Finally, uh, Tim can stop bothering me to, uh, to have you on. Uh, I'm late, I will admit, I'm late, uh, but uh, I'm very happy that you're finally on and uh, very happy that you finally signed with the UFC and we'll get to see you hopefully sometime 2022, maybe March your UFC debut. Thank you so much, Ariel. As a kid, I, I believe there's many young, young guys watching you right now. As a kid, I watch you a lot. And I believe uh, a lot of kids watching right now. And I believe one day you're going to be on the show, going to be in UFC. Just believe this in your head. Everything, everything will happen. You just have to push yourself, get right people around, and uh, don't, don't be shy. You know, go for it. Go for your dream. Don't be shy to talk about your dream. And don't let anybody stop your dream as well. Inshallah. I like this. Inshallah, alhamdulillah. You know, my family from Lebanon yes. and Egypt, so I speak a little bit as well. And so I'll say to you, salam alaikum, my friend. Uh, congratulations. Wa alaikum, my And uh, I, will, Thank uh, you so much. I will talk to you again very soon. All the best to you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Speak soon, Ariel. All right, there he is, Amen. Mohammed Mokhaev. Remember that name, my friends. Remember that name. He said by the end of 2023, he's going to be uh, a UFC champion, and uh, he is a very, very impressive young man. Even, you know, having the panache to say uh, what he said at the end there about Connor. I mean, he's he's signed to the management team, and uh, that's that's a young man who is very confident, who has been through a lot, who has overcome a lot, who has uh, seen a lot, and so I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, what he does in the UFC, what a sight it would be if he actually makes his debut in London next year, March. That's the rumor. I think March 19th, 18th, 17th, something like that. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, Mohamed Mokhaev does in the UFC flyweight again. So uh, keep an eye out. Flyweight, very interesting. We'll have the flyweight title fight coming up in January, January 22nd. Brandon Moreno against Davis and Figueredo, numero trois. I'm looking forward to that fight also on the same card as Francis Ngannou versus Cyril Ngannou, which is a great segue, my friends, to the man who will be joining us in a matter of seconds. Uh, later in the show, of course, we're going to be joined by Adrian Yanez, who had the big win on Saturday. We're going to be joined by Sean Brady, who had the big win on Saturday. But every week since I came back to this program, I have been asked, what's up with Stipe? Have you talked to Stipe? Is there an update on Stipe? You know it. I read it. Sometimes I'm doing on the nose. And there's a question about Stipe. Where's Stipe? What's up with Stipe? When's Stipe coming back? You have seen me answer these questions. I didn't have much of an update. And so we have finally located the former UFC heavyweight champion, two-time heavyweight champion, who we have not seen, of course, since March. It's been a while since I spoke to him. He, uh, he doesn't often, of course, uh, love to do media, but uh, I heard through the grapevine that he said, you know what, I miss not only the media, but I miss my good friend, Ariel Hawani. And so without further ado, let us go back to the Zoom machine and say hello to the one and only <laughs> Stipe Miacic, who is kind enough to join us. Hello, Stipe, how are you? How are you doing? I can't get my hair right. It's like terrible. No, no, it's great. You look That's fantastic. On, Stipe, that mustache yeah. is fantastic. November, babe. That's Oh, you're doing it? Yeah. We have a member of our team, Connor, who's also doing it. Uh, so where, where can people uh, contribute to your cause? The website, Movember, or you just do it just for the yeah, sake I mean, of no, I just, yeah, anywhere. I mean, there's just, you know, it's for men's, men's mental health and all that and cancer and stuff like that. So it's just, you know, I just do it just because you're a fireman as well. So it helps. I kind of feel like you like the mustache. Like you would wear the mustache in July, in May. Like you just like the look. No, you're not a mustache guy? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can rock it, but I, yeah. It gets long. If I, if I like, get the curls, hundred percent. Curls are sweet. Yeah, like Uncle Creepy, Ian McCall. I remember him. The UFC. Yeah, and, and, uh, or Wyland. 
Yes, Eddie Wineland was another one. Now, are you trimming that thing or are you just letting it go? I'm just letting it go as of right now. So and then by the end of the month, I'll start chewing on it and then I'll shave it. <laughs> well, now, what is, most importantly, what does your wife think of it? Um, you know, I offer her, you know, rise all the time and she does, she declines. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, I think it's great. And I think that's all that matters. Uh, Stipe, good to talk to you. It's been a minute. As the kids like to say, a lot has happened since we last spoke. Uh, you became a father of two. Most important. Yeah. Mazel tov. Yep. Thank you. I mean, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll sleep. I don't want to get, it's been great. Yeah. How old? So Mateo, is it Mateo? Yep. Yeah. So you, you finally got your, your son. Uh, what's it been like to have a boy now? It's been great. You know, he's a, he's a great kid. So, you know, in the beginning, he, he, uh, the first two weeks, he was like the best kid of all time, slept all day, no, no crime. Like this kid's amazing. And then the minute I opened my mouth and said that he started crying, he got really, really bad acid reflux. Oh so, yeah. But we got him on some Pepsi. So now he's back to normal. He's, he's great. So I thought like, but he's, he's a monster though. He's pretty big. <laughs> Now, how did the uh, the daughter react to the new addition to the family? Sometimes it goes great. Sometimes there's a little jealousy. Absolutely loves him. Okay. I feel like loves girls him. are the least the worst, jealous. The worst jealousy. It, yeah, the, the worst, like, jealous thing she does, all she'll say is, Daddy, put, put brother down. <laughs> with me. That's like, and she'll even cry. She just tells me to put him down. Wow. That is great. Um, and so, yeah, we're lucky. How, how old is he now? Three months? Two months? Yeah, he's about to turn three months, I believe. Okay. Um, so you've got that going on. Of course, you're you're probably very busy. Uh, you're still working at the firehouse, or you take some time off? No, I'm still working. Man. So you're, like, literally not sleeping at all? No. I mean, I get more sleep at the station probably than I do at home. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yes, it's probably a bit of a break for you, uh, when, you <laughs> yeah. when you go to the station. I, yeah, I don't, I don't feel too bad. You're still doing the podcast. We have jabs. It's doing it. We get more and more guests. You know, we got we have doing tonight. We got a. Uh, have you ever heard of him, uh, Mario Lopez? Wow, AC Slater. No big deal. No big deal. That's what I do. Wow, you're pulling the guests. Are you booking them? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying. You know, there's so, some. I think we have, it was Joey. We were supposed to have Joey Diaz on last week, but he had some stuff come up. He couldn't do it, but he's going to be back on again. Gonna come do it again. He said, and so we're excited. You know, we're just you know baby steps. You got to you know got to crawl before you can walk. Yes. Well, I mean, no. Did not you just like celebrate your two year, three year anniversary? One, one year. One year. Okay. So I mean, that's you're you're not crawling anymore. You're you're legit walking. I do love the notion of like you who you know has always kind of like not loved doing media, reaching out to people to book interviews. There's something very there's something very nice about that. Some sweet irony there. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I make it, make them feel really bad, and then they're like, oh, yeah, I gotta do this podcast. Yeah. This guy, you know. So. It's a little weird that I haven't been invited. If I'm being honest. Awesome. What's that? It's a little weird that I haven't been invited yet. I feel a little. Well, you're busy, man. Look at you. You're you're like big timer. Yeah, you're right. I am too busy. Um, that is a good point. <laughs> you had Jake Paul on, right? Didn't you have Jake Paul on? Yeah, yeah. We had him, we had him in the studio too, which is pretty neat. You were uh, you were omnipresent that week when he came back to Cleveland uh, to fight. And I heard a rumor that you were going to face them off, him and Woodley, but then you never I actually. I was going to do. Well, my selfishly, my son was born that day. No way! On the day. Yeah. Oh my gosh. My wife was like, "Still go." I'm like, "You just, you just had a C-section." She's crazy, you know. She's <laughs> like, I'm like, "You're." And then she's like, "Okay." <laughs> then she thought about it. So yeah, you, you should stay. Wow. So you were going to be like the guy in the middle, the Dana White, if you will, the enforcer. Yep. Um, yeah. So I, I was in Cleveland for that fight. It was a great experience. It, it reminded me a lot of when you were there, and and I still can't believe that they haven't gone back. I mean the the queue as it was known back then probably the loudest arena that I've ever been in when you won when you beat Alistair Overeem but he I, what I learned was Jake is actually a bit of a polarizing figure in Cleveland like some people love him in Cleveland other people are like eh he doesn't really represent us you know he left all this stuff how do you feel about the young man honestly uh, you know I just got to sit down and talk to him you know more you know you see you see what you see in the media but like just talking to him he's, he's just a regular guy he's actually you know just his you know his motivation and what he likes what he wants to do like his, uh, his, you know, his goals. And you're just like, man, you know, you, you reach out for me. Like, ah, I love this dude. You know, he's a good dude. You know, and he's from Cleveland. That's so why I love the guy. But like, just talking to him more, you like him even more once you know, like, and you know, it's all, it's all media, what media portrays it. And, you know, I think he likes it too. I think, you know, the more people you hate you, you know, the more popular you get, I guess. Sure. Fighting wise, do you, do you respect his skills? Oh, him? Yeah, definitely. I'm watching, um, 
he's definitely getting better. You know, he's got a tough fight against Fury, but I think uh, you know, he listens to his coaches, man. I watch him train. And he doesn't like, he doesn't like say what he wants to do. He just, yes, okay, and does everything he's supposed to, which, you know, that's great. That's what you got to do. Do you think he wins that fight? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a matchmaker. Yeah, you know? oh, I know. I, You've seen him train in person. Yeah, I seen him train. Yeah. You were impressed for a young guy. Yeah, I was like, wow, yeah, I couldn't believe, holy crap. You know, like, you know, I was like, he knew what he's doing, a straight punch. You know, because like, I guys, you know, don't throw straight punches. <laughs> right. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he's doing a lot of good stuff. I was, you know, I was very, very uh, impressed. So uh, the last time we saw you in action, of course, was in March. And you told us you're going to take Oh, I got knocked out. Well, I don't listen. I didn't say that. I just said the last time we saw you, I was trying to be nice. Well, I mean, pretty much. That's what you're getting. You're not going to. It's okay. Oh, my gosh. Why did I have to say that? Um, but you did tell us, Stipe, that you were going to take the rest of the year off, right? Because you had the baby, August. Yeah. When you found out about the whole interim title thing, did you want to be asked to fight in that fight or were, were you not 100%. available? I mean, I, yeah, I would love to have been asked. I mean, I feel like I understand what the UFC is doing. It's business. But at the same time, I think that I would have I deserved a trilogy fight. You know, mm -hmm. I wasn't even asked for the interim fight, which uh, who knows if I would have taken it, but just, you know, just a bit nice to been asked. Yeah. Just, just to gauge your interest. Yeah. Just, just put your toes in the water. Just feel, yeah. You know? Yeah. Would you have taken it? Well, no, we don't know. <laughs> it's over with. Sure. Did you watch it? Yeah. See, I can. No. Why? At a protest? No, I just. I, I was doing something, I don't know. Lean or something, I have no idea. I feel like you don't really watch, like unless it's something like directly involved like to you, with you, you don't watch anything. Yeah, not really, yeah. Unless it's like, you know, my, my, well, now John Vellante retires, so he's out. Um, you know, just guys I really know well, you know, like uh, Wideman or Wonder Boy, my teammates. Mm -hmm. And so obviously when uh, the young man, Cyril Gan wins, he's interim champ, so they're going to unify the belts. And that delays things for you because you want the trilogy fight, right? So d does yeah. this screw up your plans? No, I mean, listen, I'm used to it. You know, as I say, it is what it is. It's business. I get it. But at the same time, I feel like, you know, I was deserving of a trilogy fight. You know, I was just gotten one, but, you know, me. Right. <laughs> How do you, have you, have you watched the fight against Francis? Have you gone back and watched it? No. I saw a lot of memes and stuff, freaking memes about it. But what memes? Really, okay. People making fun of you? Like the one where I was like on my knees, I was going back, someone put a guitar in my hand. That's actually pretty funny. Come on. You actually laugh at my that. My wife actually showed me that. Yeah, my wife actually showed me that one. That's pretty funny. Oh, come on. That is that is very disrespectful if you ask me. Um, will you yeah. do you think you'll ever watch it? Oh, I'm gonna have to. See what I did right, what I did wrong. Without even watching it, what did you do wrong in your opinion? I let him dictate the pace. I let him do what he wanted. You know what I mean, I just didn't do what I did. You know what I mean, I kind of stayed back, which, you know, and I uh, had a few times and took a terrible shot. And, you know, there's a lot of things I did wrong, you know, but listen, we all make mistakes. We, 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 we you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Mm -hmm. And do you feel as though his, like his power, did that surprise you? Or was that what you No, expected? I mean, he hit me with good shots. He's just like, that left hook is when I didn't see. I, you know, I hit him with that right and I came, you know, Guns blazing, they would knock my hands down, and you know, took it and seen, boom. You know? Right. That was the end of it. Fighting in the smaller cage, are you tired of that now? Do you want to? Do you want to go back to the? You know, well, the next time you fight, you want it to be in like. I don't care. Cage. I mean, I'm, it doesn't matter for me. You know, I just uh, smaller, bigger. I think I think USC like smaller because there's more knockouts. <laughs> sure. sure. I mean, I think I think all the fans actually do too. But no, whatever, whatever they choose. If it's a big one, small one, I don't care. Um, whatever, whatever they choose, I'll be ready. Now, there, there was some talk that maybe they wanted to do you versus John Jones in John's heavyweight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think he wanted it or something. I don't, I don't know the whole story, but yeah, I, I, you know, I'm down and yeah, I don't know. I, uh, you know and then he wants to tell a shot. I'm like, well, you just kind of, you know, I know he's done well, you know, he's one of the greatest of all time, but you still got to, like, you know, what your order. Right. There's, I mean, like, I don't, it's like me going to the heavyweight and like, well, I want a shot. You just skip over him, you know, I mean, it's kind of, he'd be best too. So, you clearly want the trilogy, but is that the one thing that you would be okay with if it's not fighting for the belt? It's a, a John Jones fight? I mean, yeah. I mean, let's I'll fight anyone, like I would say. I mean, but I really, you know, really want that trilogy fight. I mean, just, I was, that was mine. I want it back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, I, need, I, need, I need to add more to that. Oh, look at that. How many do we have? 
How many are up there? Six. Six. Do you have the new one there? Look at the seven. Yep, I have two of them. Look at you. Yeah, I steal them. I tell them I want them back, and I run out of the arena. <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> I love it. Uh, that's when you take it away from Dana and you give it to your coach to put around your waist. At one time, low, never really been. Come on. One of the low key greatest moments in the history. Not because of, it was just like, I'm the man. I decide who puts this around my waist. Tremendous. Yeah. You sit down when you pee. Yeah. You know? Well, I don't know about that. Yeah. It reminded me of uh, Pedro Serrano. Okay. You know Pedro Serrano? Uh, from Major League? Yeah. You know, with. Okay. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. The yes, that's what it reminded me of. You've got big ones. By the way, yeah. how do you feel about the Guardians, the new name? I mean, I get why they did Like, you know, when you're in Cle- I don't know if you remember, remember Cleveland on the, the bridge, they have a, you know, yeah. I, I mean, I wish they went with the spiders, like the old school. Yeah. You know, it is what it is, son. What are you going to do? I, I understand why they switched the Indians. You know, I just felt like, you know, felt like, you know I, I mean, I felt like that, you know, it was best thing to do and they did it right. You know, they, they were, they were professional about it on both sides and, you know, and listen, it doesn't matter if we have a baseball team, they're not gone. So that's you know, better than anything. Sure. Speaking of professional, uh, how do you feel about Mr. OBJ? Unfortunately, you know, it didn't work out. It sucks. You know, it's just, it's like, it's business. It's just, uh, it wasn't happy. I didn't, I didn't really get too much into it. You know, I have a friend on the inside knows a lot of going on. But I, I didn't really talk to him too much about it. But I just said, "Is he going to leave?" And then he's, he's probably like, "Yep." <laughs> and then I and then I saw that what his uh, OBJ's dad posted. I mean, you know, I, I think it was now. I don't think Baker was intentionally not throwing to him. I think it's just. I mean, I don't know if 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 I'm playing football, and I have a, you know five or four or five two hundred sixty pound men, three hundred pound men screaming at me, trying to take my head off. Yeah, I'm just going to throw the ball. I don't really care where it goes. Yes, the best and. But I get, I, I get it though too. I mean, he's an amazing receiver. You know, unfortunately, you know, he's with he's with, with the Rams now, and this is what it is. You wish him the worst, of course, right? No, no, no. Oh, come on. Oh. I did well for us. But, so, I mean, did he? What did he do so great for you guys? It, I'm saying, you know, you're right. You know, first year, you had a thousand yards receiving. Last year, he's not paid to do that, but he hurt his knee. I mean, next, next year, not so much, but I mean, last year. Do, do people hate him there now? Really? I mean, it's Cleveland. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? They hold a grudge? Yeah, of course. Yes. Just ask LeBron. Although the Cavs, by the way, doing great. Yeah, right? Yeah. Are they still uh, they're, they're, yeah, they're, I think so. Yeah. But they've got that young dude, Evan Mobley, uh, Garland. Yeah. They're great. You're back on the bandwagon. You jumped off for a few years. Now you're back. Not at all. They just sent me a jersey. I got a post about it, too. I forgot. Oh. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, no problem. With your name on the back? Yeah, I'm actually really excited. But I never got one. I finally got one. You never got even when you won the belt. Yeah. Wow. Do you share? Yeah. Do you share my sentiment? Like, why haven't we gone back to Cleveland for one of your fights? What's going on here? You know, I don't know. I would love to. Means I don't have to travel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, the crowd was insane. No. no, yeah, it's amazing. Like just the electricity and just I, 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 you know, every time I talk about it, I'm just thinking about walking out. It's just I get goosebumps every time I think about it. It's it's. It's crazy. Like it just, you know, just the feeling. I'll never get that feeling. You know, unless we do it again, you know, but uh, just that, just it'll never top it. Just that feeling, you know, I just, I usually don't get emotional and stuff during walkouts. I kind of just like, whatever, dude, I'm here to fight. Yeah. Like I was like, really jacked. you couldn't tell, but I was really jacked up. Really? <laughs> yeah. I was like, in that, in that fight, it probably like around a minute or two before he put me on my ass. I, uh, I was like having a hard time breathing. Cause I was so like, like, <sighs> like I was so jacked up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Most you've ever been jacked up? Yeah. Did you get emotional? Like it was really, it was really hard for me to breathe. And then and over me and dropped me. I, then I was good after that. Then I was like, okay, and reset. We're good. Yeah. yeah. Did you get emotional? Like uh, obviously jacked with energy, but also emotional just because of the moment. It's Cleveland. You're the champ. Yeah. So my, my wife makes fun of me for this, but two days after the fight or a day after the fight, I was at home where I was just trolling the internet and, <laughs> Saw like a YouTube video and they're like, Steve, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, you're crying. Like, no, I got something in my eye. Leave me alone. You know? Wow. It was, uh, you know, I was really bawling. I was, it was just cool to feel all the love. Wow. You crying is something that I just can't picture. I'm a crier. I'm a crier. I'm sensitive. You're a crier? You're not a crier. No, not really. But I'm sensitive. Yeah. I'm a hard mess. <laughs> yeah, right.
<laughs> um, so th- that would be incredible. If you could, if you could map out your perfect 2020, what would it be? Lo- you know, what would it look like? 2020. Sorry, 2022. I forgot the two on the back. <laughs> okay, cool. Are they, are we going We're going back? backwards. Yeah. So perfect 2022. Uh, like, yeah. I would keep my belt. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, yeah, I definitely get a trilogy. You know, get my shot back at the title, get my belt back, and you know, back to normal. Everything's back to normal. Do you think he wins? Who's that? Francis, because that young man, surreal gun, he's very good. Oh, he's really good. Yeah, I don't know, for sure. I mean. I don't know. I mean, just uh, it's a big fight, you know. And um, my friends, like you say, he got power, so it just takes one from him. And but you know, it's real. He's the guys. He brings it, and he knows how to fight. And they they spar with each other. You guess before, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know anything about it, but I just you know, I don't know he did. But well, you, um, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I don't know if you pay attention, but uh, Francis has his own issues with the UFC brass right now. He's not very happy. Uh, are you familiar with any of this? No. Yeah. Yeah, last fight on his contract. They want to resign him. He doesn't want to resign. It's a really interesting story. In fact, uh, he came on my show and uh, really revealed a lot of the details. He's uh, very outspoken about his uh, feelings towards how he's been treated and whatnot. About that interim title, he didn't he didn't like that. So, I mean, maybe one could say well, I, you know, I, I get the interim title, but like the reason I didn't fight him right away, I think you know that, that injury and like you know like COVID kind of hit is like. People think I didn't want to fight him. Like, bro, I would have fought DC a lot earlier, but like, I torn retina and then COVID. Like, I don't. I like, think I didn't plan a pandemic or tearing my retina. But sure. sorry, yeah, screw my vision. Like, let's go fight. You know. Do you feel like that is held against you? People forget about those oh, things. Everyone thinks like I fight once a year and this and that. I'm like, whatever. I mean, damn if you do, damn if you don't. Right. In a, in a, in a perfect world next year, would you like to fight more than once a year? Of course. Yeah. When would you like to return? You know, I'll get that rematch. Right. But what? Look, let's say Francis loses. You're just you. You don't really care yeah. so much about the. You want the belt, right? You want to fight for the belt. Yeah. Now, what if they say to you, "You fight John Jones first? Whatever. You would do it. <laughs> make, what was that? To make it right. You're just gonna make it right. Yeah. Meaning that's a big time fight. Yes. Have you been in contact with them recently? No, I've been around with my baby. Yeah. <laughs> are you talking to them soon? Oh, yeah, actually, we are. Good thing you remind me. <laughs> I'm just, I totally forgot. I was like, I like baby, like tiredness. I guess you're good. Like baby brain. But uh, yeah, in December, actually, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Ooh. Oh, yeah. But then I can't. You're, you're, uh, you're going to go there? Yep. Sit down and talk shop. Yeah, we're supposed to. I was supposed to go in November, but then with everything going on, baby, and just it was too much, so we couldn't do it. Okay. What What are you hoping to get out of that? I don't know, just handshake, maybe a beer. I don't. I don't know. You know, figure it out. You want some kind of uh, roadmap, some kind of you know. That's. I mean, that's that's what it is. I mean, every time. I mean, and then what every discussion business discussion is, it's a roadmap of what you want, what they want, and how you can make that road all one. Right. And I would imagine you know the other guy, you know, like the the Curtis Blades is of the world and these guys, this is not of interest to you right now. You want title shot or John Jones, it sounds like. Mm-hmm. If John Jones is fighting, we don't really know his situation. Yeah, he's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so uh, have you put it, you know, now that you're a father of two and you've got so much going on in your life, have you decided, all right, I've got X amount of fights left, X amount of years left. Have you gone to that point yet? No, I mean, just like I said, I feel good still. It's all matters to me. And, you know, as long as I'm feeling good and having fun in the sport, you know, I'm going to keep doing it. But, you know, it's going to come to an end. There's no question. I just don't know when. But, yeah, I feel like you guys always want me to retire. Every, no one every, wants you to retire. What are you talking about? Uh, well, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, once I retire, you know, my kids, you know, one's three, then one's three months. I think two more months, they start looking for a job, you know, start paying the bills around the house, too. So, you know, <laughs> play fan free. So, no, the reason I asked that question was, I want to know before it's all said and done, are we going to get that boxing match in or two? Oh, man, I would love it. I would love to. You know, if they get the opportunity, it'd be great. Man, I want, I want to see you in a boxing match. I, I really think you could do very well. Me too. I love it. You know I mean? I, I love it. Oh, I, got, I would over the moon for it. Tell you right now. This excites Beginning, you? Yes, very much so. Dream opponent. It really excites me. I don't know why, but it's just, it's, cause I think it's just a different. Different, yeah. Yeah, just 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 like that thrill, just something different. You know, all the way about kicks and punches. You know, kicks, not just punch, but kicks and knees and takedowns. And you know what I mean? It's just 
just something, just a new combat, just a, just new experience, new uh, a different atmosphere. Just I love it. Are you saying if if I'm understanding you correctly, you want to fight Jake Paul next? Is that what you just said? No. <laughs> Enough with you. I mean, listen, this will be the last interview I ever do with you. I'm starting that right now. <laughs> no, I never. I, just, I was just, uh, you know, listen, I had to, I have to sacrifice my firstborn son to get you on the program these days. Listen, you're welcome. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. I mean, poor Lloyd. Has, I, almost did, I almost didn't do it today either. Oh, no way. You almost canceled this morning? No, 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 no. Like a couple days ago. When oh. I was at, it just because I, I had a lot going on today. I was like, oh, man. But then I was like, all right, I'll do it. You know. Oh, God. I appreciate you. I felt bad. You're from Canada. I felt bad. It's just it is no. Here we are. <laughs> we don't have a lot going for us over here. Um, oh, yeah, stop. You, I mean, um, your your buddy John retired. Yeah. Did you go to the fight? Fortunately, no, I did not. Yeah, uh, no, that was like the hardest fight I've ever had to watch. Why? Because one, John's like my best friend. Two, I've trained with Chris Barnett, and he's the awesomest guy ever. Yeah, yeah. And I haven't texted me because I'm like, I just want to let him have his moment. Like, I don't want to keep like bothering him, but like, it was so hard because I'm like, God, dude, you're playing my best friend, but you're like the greatest dude ever. And like, he's such an I like that kid. Like when I talk about Chris Barnett, that dude, you didn't even have to train me. Just his, just his like his uh, his his, his, his energy personality. Yeah, it's, just, it's awesome. Like he's just so, just a good dude. You know what I mean? Like he just, he just brings you up and just you have a bad day. That dude make you feel better. Well, how about that scene at the end? He gets this amazing win at MSG, and he's talking about John. He's like giving John the microphone. Very few people would do that. Yeah, he's a good. He's just listen. He's just a humble dude. He's a good guy. He's a really good guy. When did you train with him? Uh, for the DC fights, I believe. Oh. A couple Three, four times, I believe. Yeah, but he's he's awesome. He's just and when I was away a couple of times, you know, it was, it was you know, he still made it work. It was just you know, he's just a good dude. He's just awesome. Yeah, he. I mean, the physique is very much DC like, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. 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 He's yeah. He's but he's just you know he's very athletic. You would never believe that. You know. Yeah. Just like I said, he's just a really good dude. I love that kid. Unlike DC, like a DC ain't doing no backflips and stuff like that. You know. I'm not doing no backflips either. So. That's true. <laughs> By the way, you and DC cool now. It wasn't cool. Well, you know, in the- I told him I text him. I uh, the NA awards. They sent me his his. Uh, <laughs> I saw order. that. Yeah, you you accepted it. They sent it to your house. Yeah, they sent it to my house. I think it was for a fight, but they sent the wrong one. They were they sent analyst of the year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we stand over there. Would you? Are you going to give it to him? I think you shouldn't keep it. I thought I thought I put a piece of tape over. Yeah. Steve Bayer's name. Screw him. I mean, come on. Uh, it is. It's an award. I would love to see you do analysts. Like, we see all the fighters at the desk. I feel like you you would be really good at it. Yeah, I have to drink, like, 10 cups of tea to, like, really loosen up my throat so oh, I can, like, get my word. Have you ever done it? I have. You know, not, like, live, but like, I've done stuff like that, yeah. Yeah. Do you I would love to. to. Okay. I'm going to call it. Listen, when you have that meeting coming up in uh, December, we want a big-time fight title fight. We want John Jones at some point. We want to box. Who, who, who's our dream boxing match? Whoever. Doesn't matter. I mean, I was, like, known, like, you know I mean? Top of the world. Joshua, Fury, those guys. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. And we want to do TV work. Mm-hmm. I just got done with the Coma FD. Yeah, it came out in October. Well, I did that a while back. But I saw that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw that. And aren't, no you, deal. aren't you pitching some sort of firefighting reality show or something? Yeah, with uh, my base Penn, who uh, does Fire Fighter Chronicles, he's a big following on social media, and also uh, uh, Vice President of uh, Fire Department Coffee, where I have my double, double coffee, you know, double, double the punch. And um, yeah, we're looking to do like a kind of like a little thing. So we'll see. We're, we're working on it, you know, just right now a little tough with COVID and everything, but I think uh, we have a lot, of, a lot of good leads. Okay. I feel like, I mean, I feel like the stars are aligning for us here, Stipe. I hope so. Listen, the problem is if I do the analyst, I'm like, oh my God, here we go. Here we go. Oh my God. Like, what the hell did you say? <laughs> I think you would be great. You have a great personality. People need to see this side of you. I wish. That's how I got my wife. That's true. That is true. Uh, like I tell every day. I wake up in the morning. I'm like, you are so lucky you are married to me. <laughs> she punched up. You're saying she punched up. 100%. 100%. I agree. Hey, over. She won the lottery. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 
Um, I'm lucky. Yes, yes. Uh, I met your wife, and I think that is a, a very accurate statement, Stipe. But. Yes, I'm very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so this is big. We got the big meeting. You, by the way, do you need me to come to the meeting? Do you need me to be there? Moral support, emotional support, anything like that? You get my hype, man. Yeah, I, listen, I feel like I could do a great job. You know, there were times at first I think you didn't like me, then you liked me, then you didn't like me. I feel like we're back on track now. I feel like we could do a lot of great things. He's like you. Listen, <laughs> listen, I think you're surprised that I won your little nose board thing. Why, why would I be surprised? I'm the one who gives them out. Yeah, I think you were I think you were surprised I came out strong like that and I, I crushed it. No, listen, I'm the one who gives the winners the trophies. So, you know, it all comes from me. I'm saying, who's it, me, the Felder? Um, was it? I can't think of the guys. That, that, that wasn't in Chicago. Oh, yeah, the I, trivia. You're talking about yeah, the trivia. Oh, the trip. By the way, this is one of the great, this is one of the great upsets in the history of my career. We're in Chicago <laughs> trivia. You Felder, Eddie Alvarez, Ben Askren, and there might've been one more. Felder. It was Felder. You Felder, Eddie Alvarez, Ben Askren. You Felder, but Eddie Alvarez. I think there was a fifth. Anyway. Someone from New York or New Jersey. Eddie Alvarez, no? Oh, yeah, maybe it was. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. And you freaking won the trivia, which, by the way, you told me you were going to lose. Like, you predicted you were going to lose. You weren't very confident, at least, and you freaking won. It was great. How much fun was that? It was actually a lot of fun. I crushed it. Yeah, you did. You did. I think your chair yeah, I, broke I got off. a lot of the old school answers. I was pretty impressed with myself. <laughs> yes. I think you also crushed your chair. Remember when your chair broke? Oh, remember that? <laughs> we need to do it again. Fan. We need to do it yeah. again. Um, all right. Yeah. I've taken up too much of your time, Stipe. Thank you for doing this. See, it's fun to do right. media sometimes. Laughing, smiling. Yeah, I mean, well, it's not robotics, so I'm okay with it. We're gonna fight, we're gonna fight for the belt. By the end of by this time next year, you're gonna be UFC champion again. Is that the prediction? Yep. All right. That's all we care about. Stipe, good luck yeah. to you. And uh we'll see uh, my Bills are gonna see your Browns in the playoffs, all right? Yeah, man. <laughs> Not from last week, but we're good. Yeah. Baby step. Congrats to your family. All the best, and uh, hope it all works out. We'll see you soon. Thanks, homie. Good seeing you, dude. All right. Good seeing you, too. There he is, Stipe Miacic, with a little update on his situation. Jose Youngs comes in with the uh, the info in the clutch. Wonder Boy. That's right. Wonder Boy. Definitely not a New Jersey guy, although connected to New York. Um, You know related to Chris Weidman now through marriage. So, yes. Shout out to Stipe. What a great guy, that Stipe Miacic. And you have to wonder how he fits into everything because we have a situation where the heavyweight title is going to be defended on January 22nd in Anaheim, Honda Center, Francis Ngannou, Cyril Ghan. If Cyril wins, that opens things up. He doesn't have those issues with UFC. If Francis wins, whew, things are about to get really interesting. Given his contract situation, given his relationship with the brass right now. Now, we don't know what's happening with John Jones. Like I said, he's going to do this grappling match. Maybe, yes, no, we're not sure. But we want to see him fight again, obviously. Francis versus Cyril, Stipe versus John is pretty big time stuff and would make a lot of sense as a number one contender fight. But then, of course, there's the fear. Francis versus Cyril. Francis wins. You do John versus Francis. Uh, now you've got a situation where Stipe is on the outside looking in. So I wonder what they're going to talk about in December. If they need me to come to help out, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to help. But he's still one of the biggest names in the sport, still one of the biggest names in the UFC. And I got to tell you, UFC 203, when he fought Alistair Overeem, that crowd was so loud, especially at the end, because it, you know, it was a little dicey there for a second. He got dropped, comes back, wins. When he did the OH, that whole thing, man, that was, I mean, it was deafening. That crowd, Dublin crowd, uh, Australia, UFC 127, Montreal, GSP, like those are top five off the top of my head, loudest arenas that I've ever had an opportunity to, uh, you know, experience in person. And by the way, when I was there in August for the Jake Paul fight, 
extremely loud as well. Now, I know the reason why they don't like to go to Cleveland too often, it's because you can't sell, you know, you, you can't price tickets the same as, say, in Las Vegas or a big market like New York. But you got a star who's from that area and who is so popular in that market, it's a shame not to capitalize on it. Great city, great fan base, great fighter, great guy. Let's hope they uh, they give him what he wants. And, you know, not that many years left, one would presume he is approaching 40 in uh, in August of next year. So we're around the same age, by the way. I'm uh, a year, a month younger than Stipe. He's born in August of 1982. I'm July of 1982. Why does it feel like Stipe is like that much more accomplished and mat- like more mature than I am? Am I crazy? Maybe. Anyway, uh, let's go now to our next guest. So we go from a uh, former champion who was born in 1982 to a potential future champion who is born in 1992. In fact, he will be turning 29 tomorrow. He's a big time, we'll keep uh, this theme going, of big time prospects of all the prospects on our show today, of all the names who are climbing the ranks. He is probably, in my opinion, the most advanced of the bunch. He was in the co-main event on Saturday night. He fought Michael Chiesa in a big-time fight. He won that fight via unanimous decision. He is now 15-0 and as a professional. He is now 5-0 and as a UFC fighter. He is Sean Brady, and he joins us now via the magic of Zoom. There he is. Sean, what's happening, man? What's going on, my man? Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Oh, you're the man. I was going to ask you, what's sticking out of your ear over there? But it's your AirPod. <laughs> uh, sh- would it be easier for me to take them out? No, or- I just, it's like, I mean, I uh, love, I uh, love, yes, I love watching fighters put AirPods in their cauliflower ears. My my ear is so bad, I have to like bend it in there a certain way or else it'll just fall right out. <laughs> my gosh. Uh, not as bad as Adrian Yanez, who we saw had to get his ear drained on Saturday. I seen him at the hotel afterwards, and I was like, "Bro, that is uh, that's a that, that ear looks bad." Yes, <laughs> his his was bad, but uh, it was definitely worth it for him. Um, and we will be talking to him next. By the way, uh, nice. The, the 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Like the way in which you speak reminds me so much of Eddie Alvarez. Is this a Philly thing? Like even when you said I seen and when you say fight, when you say fight, it reminds me so much of Eddie Alvarez. Is that just a Philly thing or is that because you've been around him and you've taken his, uh, his accent? <laughs> I think it's just a Philly thing. I think it's just the way we talk. Uh, I'm around Eddie a lot. He, he called me right before I left for Vegas for the fight. He's like a big brother to me, but uh, I think it's just the way we talk. I think, uh, I think we all kind of just sound the same, to be honest. I love it. I love it. It reminds me a lot of him. And by the way, I do have to thank you. You were behind, you know, the big push to get Andre Petrosky to walk out to uh, Island Boy. He he fumbled the bag, and we got Virna here yes. who uh, came out. Yes. But it was a valiant effort on your part. I mean, you really tried to make this happen, yes? I pushed. I was I was really pushing for it. I really wanted him to do it. He um he he said some weird stuff to you on Twitter. Yeah, that was I weird. Can't, I I I yeah, I, I couldn't uh, I couldn't support that. I had to let you know that. <laughs> <laughs> First he wants to take and, uh, me out to a basketball game. I'm like, bro, I'm trying yeah, to put he, you on the wall here. He could we could have been immortalized. Immortalized. He dropped the ball. He dropped the ball for both of us, but uh he got to win that night, so that, 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 that's what yeah. matters. So it, it's, it's all, it's all good. I don't know if it's I agree good. if that's what matters. I mean, he'd literally be on the wall here with all the gods, win or lose. Virna lost that's that true. night and she's on the wall just for the record. Just want to let you know. And by the way, both of you, understand. both of you would have been on the wall. That was the deal. I Come on. I know. I know. Well, I, th- I didn't know you couldn't, two different people couldn't walk out to the same song. As long as it's not that I thought if, as long as you weren't fighting each other, it wouldn't matter. But, I guess it does. I kind of like that rule. There are enough songs out there we don't it, hear the same one twice on the same night. Yeah, but a lot, of, a lot of the time you don't even get to hear the song though, right? That's true. Like, That's true. It turns to the screen and the people and the, we're already in the cage. So yeah, but I guess you're right. There, there, there's a reason for it. But uh, either way, he dropped the ball. I hope he's listening and I hope he knows he messed <laughs> up. Uh, you did not <laughs> mess up. You had a big win on Saturday. It seemed to me, correct me if I'm wrong, it felt like you weren't all that psyched about the win. Like you were down on yourself afterwards. Why? Um. Well, 
So I broke my nose multiple times. Kiesa, he did a good job. He hit me with a good punch right in my nose and like finished into the fight. And I couldn't breathe for the rest of the fight. Wow. So um, it just it just made it hard. I, I was literally, I have an appointment tomorrow morning to go get my nose x-rayed and finally get it taken care of. So it stops bleeding when I get hit. But um, I was just sucking blood the entire fight. And it just made it hard to do. I wanted to do more and show more because I've been off for a while. I had two canceled fights, an injury. I just wanted to show more of what I, of who I am. But um, you're right, though. At the end of the day, I was number 14. I beat number six. It's still a big win. I went back and watched the fight on the airplane flying home. And um, I was less down on myself. But uh, I'm, my, I'm my hardest critic. And... Um, I just want to, I want to do the best every single time, but um, it's fighting and sometimes you just got to improvise and, and get the win. And that's what I did. By the way, at what point in the fight could you not breathe anymore? Like when did that actually happen? It was before I shot my first takedown, he hit me with a good cross. I took him down and I was on his back and I looked at his back and there was so much blood on his back. And I was like, man, that's, it, it was pretty bad. And that's when I started just, it was going in, like dripping into my throat. So I'm trying to breathe. And while I'm breathing, I'm sucking in blood. It's just something I broke my nose a few times. And um, sometimes I'll get hit hard and it won't bleed. But other times like I'll just get clipped on it like small and during sparring. Or even like if I'm squeezing like a choke really hard, like a lot of pressure, it'll start to bleed. So it's something I got to get taken care of. And I'm just going to get it done now. So um, it's not a problem in the future. I noted after the fight, I think you won that fight, obviously. I don't think anyone yeah. disagrees. Yeah, I, no. But I noted, if this were Pride rules, do you win that fight because of how it ended? What do you think? You know Pride rules, like they would score the fight on the whole, right? So bas basically, like, who's standing at the end, right? Like, who? who, who? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know at that point because he, he to, to me, even the third round, I had his back for three minutes, you know, and he had a good... 45 seconds or it was, I think it was less than that. I think it was 30 seconds. So to me, I won that fight no matter what rules it is. But um, yeah, man, it, it, I'm at the point of career, in my career now where I'm not reading stupid comments on the internet, you know. Um, wow. What are you trying like to say? But, um, You're trying to say my comments were stupid? No. I mean, come on. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I seen your, I seen that. I, I seen it. But uh, no, I, I thought I clearly won the fight. He had a few good moments, but I thought I controlled the fight overall. Yeah. And um, if, and I, I, I honestly hope that future opponents think that that's the best I have. And uh, it's going to be a, a, a rude awakening for a lot of people because I didn't show really anything. Um, so this obviously in terms of name, in terms of uh, notoriety, like a, a step up for you. Did you feel a little more nervous going into the fight? The actual fight? No. Um, the week felt like a little bit different just because I was – I did a lot more interviews. Um, I had a, a lot more media stuff. There just felt like there was more pressure there. There was more like, after you win this, what comes next? You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like everyone's like, you're you're going to this, you're going to that, and I'm just like, listen, Michael Kies is a, a tough dude. There's a reason he's number six in the world. He's been in the UFC for a long, long time. Before that, he was on the Ultimate Fighter, so he has plenty of experience. And I knew it was going to be a tough fight, you know, and um, I knew I just had to go win it. And then all that other stuff comes afterwards. So at the time, it was just noise. Going into the fight, I felt fine. And even looking back and watching it, even with my nose and anything else that happened, I still fought a decent fight and I got the win. Not every night is going to be the best night of your life, you know, and that's what's hard about fighting. We do all this training. We feel great. And then you get in there and you only have 15 minutes to show it. So if your stomach hurts, if your head hurts, all that stuff like can affect you and you just got to adjust and you got to win. And, and that's what I did. And I'm 15 and zero, and I just got the, I got to, I beat a big name and that's what I think I need it on my record. A lot of people will look at me and be like, Hey, he's 14 and zero, he's ranked, but he hasn't really beat anybody with a good name. I had that name now. So a lot of these other top 10 guys are going to have to, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to fight, you know. So um, it's what I needed, and um, I got it the hard way. And I've been doing that my whole career, so I don't mind doing it. Did you see that clip of him in between rounds? I'm not sure which round it was where he's like, "Man, that guy's strong." Yeah, yeah. That's gotta be that's <laughs> gotta be pretty damn cool, man. I took him down, and he was like, "Man, 
because Paul Felder is my teammate of mine, and I know they're close. He was like, Paul was in line. He was like, you are strong. I, I, I laughed, and I'm like, bro, like, we're in the middle of fighting right now. Yeah. He's he's the nicest guy in the world. And um, at the end of the day, like, people – even when we were hugging at the weigh-ins, like, but some of my teammates and my coach, like, they're, like, my best friends, and we try to kill each other at training. It's a sport. I don't have to push you at weigh-ins or, or mean mug you or anything like that to go in there and try to hurt you, you know? Kiss is a super nice guy, and I'm just super grateful he gave me the opportunity that he did. Being ranked number six, he didn't have to take that fight. He could have said no and waited for somebody, and um, I'm super grateful that he gave me that opportunity. Man, it says a lot about him. I, I have uh, openly criticized the welterweights in particular, who I feel like do a lot of squatting on their spot. Oh, I don't want to fight this guy. Yeah, this guy. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. Not a lot of dudes are fighting someone who's ranked eight spots behind him, so he deserves a ton of credit no. for him. Hundred percent. He's a uh, he's a great guy, and I wish him nothing but the best. Um. So that that whole you know because I know on the broadcast they were like oh you know I don't like you know DC was saying he doesn't like when there's talking in the middle of the fight and all that. How, would you prefer if there's no talk? You know how do you feel about that? Were you caught off guard by it? I wasn't caught off guard. I I didn't really. It didn't bother me. Um. I uh I, I trained with Neil Magny. He came out and helped me um in the beginning of my camp, and he was like. He told me, he was like, yo, he's, he try, I don't know if he's either really, really nice or if he does it on purpose. He's going to be talking to you the whole time during the week if he sees you and he's going to be super nice. Uh-huh. And uh, either way, it didn't, it didn't bother me. You know, like I said, you can be nice or you can try to fight me when you see me. Either way, we're going to get in there and we're going to take care of business. And at the end of it, it it's going to be, it, it is what it is. I don't, I don't mind. You can talk, you can say whatever you want. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing and uh, try to win the fight. Two DC questions for you. The first one in the post fight interview, it really seemed like he was trying hard to get you to call someone out. What did you make of that? Yeah, yeah, I, I guess he, I don't know what he wanted me to say. Um, I'm not that guy, you know. I don't. I'm not going to say something I don't want to say. Uh, I think a main event would be would be nice against another top ten or a top five guy. You know, the rankings come out tomorrow. I'll see where I land. And even if I don't get that, I really, uh, just uh, another big name on a big card would be cool. Um, I did say a name. I said the winner of Bilal or Wonderboy in my post-fight interview. I couldn't think of it at the time. You know, you just get done fun, yeah. fist fighting. People, people always say, like, what are you going to say afterwards? I'm like, I had to go fight. Like, I have to win a fight before I think about – I'm not worried about any of that other stuff. Like, people who usually worry about what they're going to say afterwards usually aren't even going to get to that point, you know? I had one job. And that was to win the fight. I wasn't worried about what I was going to say afterwards. But, um, yeah, so I, I, I didn't know what they wanted me to say. Yeah, I wonder – I mean, I, I have not talked to him about it, but I wonder if someone was in his ear trying to get you to do that because it did seem rather forceful and perhaps in his ear so much that he forgot your name. What the <laughs> hell, man? Dude. But you called him out. Did he forget your name or was yeah. it a joke? What do you think? He, I, so what I thought – I thought he was asking my coach, Daniel Gracie, behind me what name I wanted. And Daniel didn't know what he was saying either. And then <laughs> it got clarified by my other coach, Jonathan Webb. He was like, no, he forgot your name. He was asking Daniel what your name was. Uh, I was like, he just said my name like <laughs> four times. And then he was walking out. I was like, DC, you forgot my name? But he followed me back on Instagram and uh, he, made, he made it right. He, he said he was going to follow me. He actually said he already followed me, which he didn't. Oh. I commented on his page. I commented on his page yesterday. I got the follow back. We're good. You're good? We're, DM? I, I, we're, 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 Did he we're, send you a DM? No, I, 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 I hope so. My DMs are blowing up right now. Yeah, there's, there's so much going on right now. But uh, nothing yet. But yeah, I got the follow, and I'm happy with that. DC's the man. But he did forget my name. Well, he's on the mat here. I don't know if you could see the desk. His picture has been turned around. I mean, he's been driving. It's just a mess. Yeah, situation. he's – yeah. Tough times. We're, 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 yeah, tough, tough times. We'll, 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 have a, we'll have a discussion with him later. Okay, fair enough. Um, by the way, <laughs> what a story for you, man. Um, true or false, you almost lost your foot earlier this year? I don't know if I was going to lose my foot, but it could have been trending towards that. Um, I was in the hospital for a week. I got – Long story short, I got a staph infection. My fiance, Kristen, and my mom are both nurses. They're like, you need to go to the hospital, get some IV antibiotics. 
I thought I'd be in there for a day. I'd be out and I was supposed to fight Kevin Lee at the time. And it was still like three or four weeks out. I would have enough time. I'd be completely fine. I got to the hospital. My foot wasn't getting better. Um, I was in there for about a week, a, bit, a little bit less than a week, four days in there were, they were like, listen, we have to do surgery because they did a, an MRI or something like that or a CAT scan. And they seen it was in my tendon and it was in my, um, my ankle joint. So if it were the guy, I guess, into my bone or something like that, it could have got really bad. But the pain I was in, it felt like I was going to lose my foot. Um, wow. Every time I couldn't walk, I couldn't walk. I had to use like a walker to go to the bathroom. Um, every time I would stand up, the pain that would rush to my foot, it was literally the worst pain I've ever had in my life. I was, there was times I was crying at night. I would call my, because you can't, no one could stay at, at the hospital. I was texting my fiance, like, like I'm scared. Like I was scared, you know, um, I wasn't even thinking about fighting at that time. I was like, I'm, I might never be able to walk again. And I went from, I'm a guy who, all I do is train. I run, I spar, I do jujitsu. I'm doing all these things. And then uh, two days later, I'm laid up in the hospital, not able to do something. So uh, I got out of the hospital and it still wasn't over. I had a, a IV pick line in my arm. So I had to get antibiotics for four weeks Damn. after that. I wasn't allowed to train. I wasn't allowed to sweat because if I, if I, if it got wet on the inside and got into my blood, I could have got an infection in my blood and I could have died from that. Ugh. So it was, it was rough. And my, and my cut was so bad where they cut me open when they took out the stitches, it was so swollen still it had to close from the inside out. So when I got the original phone call to fight, my incision still wasn't even closed yet. I was just getting back to tr like just getting back to training, but it was such a big opportunity. I knew with time, I just had to let it keep healing and it would, but I had a, I couldn't say no to the fight and I had to let the, the incision heal up a little bit more. And I'll, I'll send you a, a picture of it. Oh. The incision is it's nasty and it took a while to heal. And I like my, my ankles like this formed from, from it. It, it. It's, it's crazy how different my ankle looks from the whole thing, but it feels fine now. And, um, luckily I didn't lose my foot and it worked out, but it was scary. I'd never had a, a staph infection in my life. And the one I got did that to me. So, um, yeah, it was scary. And so no ill effects anymore. Nothing. No, I'm good. Um, besides my, my, my mind, I'm, I'm terrified for it to happen. So I'm like, I put like all kinds of cream on me now before I go on the mats. Like I won't, I was wearing wrestling. I didn't, spar or anything without wrestling shoes on until two weeks ago just so i could get like the feel of the mat on my feet again because i was scared that i'm like petrified that that would happen again i didn't even want to put my foot on the mat so this was like the first time i was even putting my foot on the actual mat but it's good now and it, it feels completely fine do you think it was such a bad experience that this is going to be a mental block every time you're preparing for a fight no now i'm, I'm completely fine with it i was at the um I was on oh, my fiance. Just, I don't know if you could see this. This is, uh, uh, go a little bit more, uh, more to the other side. Nope. Yep. Oh, there it is. Wow. Look at that. Dang. Yeah. That is, yeah. how many stitches is that? It was, I, it was a lot. We couldn't even <laughs> lot. Count. There was my, she, she was pulling, she was pulling, uh, so I guess some of them were like invisible or something. She was pulling them out. Like, three weeks ago before, before the fight, that's wow. when we were in there. It was, yeah, it was, um, it was brutal, but no, but like I was just saying, um, I was at the, at uh, the PI and I, I was wearing no shoes, nothing like that. I just still put like this defense soap on my, it's like a cream, like that's like a barrier. So before you go on the mats, like, you're supposed to be protected from it, but nah, I'm good now. And I, I was going to wear ankle sleeves when I fought, I didn't fight with them and I felt fine. So I'm good. Okay. Um, and I mean, that was a big deal for you because you're fighting Kevin Lee. He's a big name. Like that was your big step, right? I mean, Kiss, yeah. was that a bummer? Did you feel like, oh my gosh, this was my opportunity. Not only am I feeling like crap, I'm in the hospital, I'm in pain, but like this big fight that was booked twice yeah. falls through. Yeah. Well, because before that, when I fought Jake Matthews, after that, I was trying to fight June and I was asking for one of the top, like top 15 guys and I just couldn't get a fight and they offered Kevin Lee. I, and my manager and my coaches were like, listen, he's not even ranked at 170, but at least he's a big name and he's ranked at 155. So at least it'll do something for you, you know? So like, I wasn't even super hype on the matchup, but I just needed to fight. So 
he pulled out the first time and then we get a new date and then four weeks out that happens. And I'm just luckily like I have a, I'm, I have a great team and a great family behind me. I kept my mind on track. Once I got out of the hospital, I started just getting back into my routine. I kept my, uh, my nutrition working with the guys at the PI, my, my man, Charles out there at the PI, I kept my weight super low. So I didn't get big when I couldn't train. I just stayed on top of everything I could, everything I, I could control. I did. And it made me just transition back in the training and back in the training camp a lot easier. So it, it, it all worked out. Did you get into MMA because of Eddie Alvarez? So I started MMA when I was like 15 or 16 because a buddy of mine, uh, his name's Andrew, he was doing jujitsu at the time and, and we were like lifting weights and we didn't know anything about it. But as soon as I started training, I like in Philadelphia, everyone, it's like a thing people say, oh, Eddie Alvarez is my cousin. That's like the fun, like everyone like wants to be related to Eddie and like, Everyone just loves Eddie. So um, over the pandemic, we actually like connected because we always talked and we were cool, but we connected and we finally started training together. It was for my Christian Aguilera fight. We had, we did, he did my entire training camp with me. He was like my main sparring partner because there wasn't much other, there wasn't other training. So he was training with us full time in Philly. And now ever since then, me and him were, were super close and uh, I talked to him all the time. So he's, He's the man, and he's done a lot. He actually got me signed to the UFC. Really? Yeah, he he called Dana uh, personally, and I had a contract the next day. So he's the reason I got signed. Damn, what a legend. Wow, yeah, that is yeah, incredible. He was, yeah, he, he, he is a legend. He's a legend in fighting, and he's a legend in Philly for sure. He's, he's the man. One day I got to walk around his neighborhood, Kensington, with him. That's where our gyms are at. It's, uh, Your gyms are in Kensington? Yeah. Yep, uh, right One's right on American Street, two blocks off Kensington. That's our, that's Marquez MMA. That's our our striking gym. And then Daniel Gracie's Jiu Jitsu gym is right on, um, right on front, right off Front Street, right like right across the street from a pawn shop under the under that L right there. And, oh yes, I remember that L. Wow, that's yeah, a tough part yeah, of town, yeah. man. The UFC came and filmed, and they had me running under the L. Uh, I'm like, yo, we 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 gotta cut this short soon. We can't be doing this. Yes, it's uh, yeah, it's rough under there. But um, that's it's kind of what breeds the, all these all these tough fighters. How many tattoos do you have? Too many to count, and I'm getting more. I'm You're getting, getting more? I'm getting tattooed. I'm getting tattooed on Wednesday. What was your first? Um, this, it's my family crest on my back and, um, and that big honey mask that's on my back is had to be built around it because I got it. And now all, all my tattoos are all going to be like Japanese inspired. Um, that's like, that's just my thing now that I love it. I had tattoos when I was younger that I'm going to get lasered off and all covered in Japanese. It's going to be a wow. long, long process, but, um, I'll do all. I'll get into that when I'm like done fighting, but until then, all my skin that's open is all of me covered with Japanese. Wow! And why Wednesday? What's yeah. the occasion? Because your birthday? Uh no, just that's my birthday is. What's my birthday? My birthday, tomorrow. My birthday is tomorrow. I don't even yeah. know. I don't even know when my birthday is. But the day after, my my guy, he had a because good tattoo artist. They don't just you can't just go like they you have appointments. So he actually fit me in on Wednesday, and uh, that's when I get to go and I get 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 to get some pain. And uh, what what are we getting? I have to. He, he won't tattoo me until I finish my. It's it's my left butt cheek. Oh my it's god! It's not finished. Left butt cheek. Yeah, it's all. It, it's all. It, the outline's done. It just has to be shaded and colored in, and uh, that's what we're getting into on Wednesday. Wait a second. That like that's covered up, right? Yeah, yeah. I What's mean, the point of this? See it, but because I want my I want my. It's called a Japanese bodysuit. I want an entire bodysuit. Oh, everything's covered. What yeah. percentage of the, the body is covered? A lot. Like, what would you say, 80? I, yeah, it's got to be close to 80. I have, like, the right side of me not done. I Like, my armpit. I won't do the front of my neck. I have that, that leper on the back of my head. I won't do the front of my neck because out of respect for my mom. She asked me not to. Really? Wow. So, uh, we got, I got to, I got to, I got to, I trust me, I, I want to do it, but I got to. Don't do it, man. I got to hold I got no, I won't. That's the only reason I won't do it is because my mom. What about the face? No, never. Not the face. Okay. No face, no neck. I'm not gonna be like your like that, like your boys. The <laughs> island boys. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Good, good, no, good, good, no good. No face, 
no, no, no face tattoos. Damn. So even the parts that the public doesn't see, you just want the whole damn thing. Yeah. Well, I guess, I guess, you all know, covered. your fiance, you know, it's, that's, that's, so she, that's yeah. right. Lo, lo, yes. <laughs> Does she have tattoos as well? Like three small ones. Okay. We actually, we just got, um, we got, uh, bees on the back of our, behind our ear for our dog. His name is Bane. So okay. we went and got some little, little, little tattoos for him. Uh, the champ was in attendance, Kamar Usman, right? He was sitting yeah. in the front row on yep. Saturday. Uh, he say yeah. anything to you? You say anything to him? Uh, I went up to him afterwards. I just said, what's up, champ? He was sitting there with Ali, and I said, what's up to both of them? I, I know Ali. He's he's a Henzo Gracie black belt. I'm a Henzo Gracie black belt. And Kamaro, he's a great champion. I just said, what's up, champ, after I fought, and that was that. How long before we're fighting for a belt? We're in the discussion, in your mind. How long? In the discussion, one more fight, one or two more fighting for it. End of 2022, early 2023. Let's we'll, go. We'll see how we'll see how the year plays out. Um, I'm gonna get my I I'm gonna get my nose fixed. Get my get whatever's going on there. I get an X-ray tomorrow. Get it taken care of, and I want to fight in March or April. And um, I want to get three in this year. Hopefully, no injuries happen, and uh, just just keep going. I love it. Well, I wish you uh, continued success, my man. It's uh, it's an amazing story. I'm so happy that we finally got to get you on the show. I've been trying yeah, to book you all this me time. Too. You're so busy. You won't come on. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. That's on me. Yeah, I mean, That's no. on- <laughs> I've, I've been I've been waiting for that. I've been waiting for that that DM. Yeah, man. I, I appreciate you having me on, man. I, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan, and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, and uh, happy birthday, happy thank early you, birthday to you tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, congrats on the Thank win, you. the big win. Don't be so hard on yourself. Thanks, it was Eric. a great performance. I won't. And I look forward to the next one. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. All right, there he is, Sean Brady. Remember that name as well. And I got to tell you, the nachas that I get, you know, I'll never forget. Again, not trying to, you know, just, uh, open up the old book. I'll never forget when I was told, yeah, I was told this. I, I was legit told this. Like the younger guys, you know, you don't have to have them yet. These are the fighters. These are the people, these are the men and the women who make me love MMA. It's not even so much the champs, the names that you know, the names that you already, you know, are well aware of. It's these guys, the Sean Brady's of the world, the 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 Mohammed Mohayevs of the world, the the Lupi Godinez of the world, the the Adrian Yanez of the world. Like these are the individuals who make this sport so special. Uh, all with different backstories, all with different paths all with different trials and tribulations triumphs all with different families you know it's like it's such a great sport and you get to to learn about these people i mean that guy is legitimately one or two fights away from being in that discussion i'm not gonna say he's fighting for the belt in in a fight but you just beat michael Kesa, who was ranked sixth why can't he fight a vicente luque next at 15 and 0 now is everyone at 170 going to be as willing to fight a Sean Brady as Kesa was, who I really think deserves a ton of credit for that? I know he was coming off a loss, but still, a lot of guys wouldn't do that. I give Kesa a lot of credit. A lot of credit. 15-0. and 0, uh, Prior to that win over Kesa, he beat Jake Matthews via submission in March. Prior to that beat Christian Aguilera. Prior to that beat Ismail Naordiev. Prior to that beat, Court McGee, the veteran. Former Cage Fury fighting championship, CFFC welterweight champion. A name to certainly keep on your radar. Another name to uh, to keep on your radar, who you by now probably know a lot about. If you watched on Saturday, he had one of the uh, the best performances of the night. In fact, it won the Fight of the Night Award. He is undefeated in the UFC. He is 15-3. and three. He just defeated David Grant. Prior to that, he stopped Randy Costa. Prior to that, he stopped Gustavo Lopez. Prior to that, he stopped uh, Victor Rodriguez. Won on the Contender Series. This man is one of the best boxers. I mean, there's a case to be made. A lot of people are calling themselves the best boxer in the UFC. This man has a legitimate case to being the best boxer in the UFC. And in my opinion is one of the names to look out for in that weight class. One of the names who, you know, you talk about people who might be fighting for a belt at 135 in the very near future. 
one of the most loaded divisions in the UFC. Adrian Yanez could very well be one of those guys in the very near future. Let's go back to the Zoom machine and say hello to another newcomer to the program, the one and only Adrian Yanez, kind enough to join us. Adrian, how are you, my friend? Man, uh, I'm doing well. I'm just excited about the win and everything. And, uh, man, thank you for having me on the show. Yes, it's great to be here. Could I ask you uh, – great to have you here, I should say um, – how is the ear? I was sorry. I was fixated by the ear, right? It kind of threw me off there. <laughs> what What are those things? Oh, yeah. What's going on there? Oh, what, what are those things? These are magnets, man. I had to drain my ear and for it to not refill back up like how it did on uh, Saturday. I had to close it off with some magnets. But honestly, like, this literally took like an hour after I got back because whenever they drained it in the UFC, they gave me like one little clamp and it only was able to clamp so much that – everything else started filling back up. So I had to be at home for about an hour, just draining it with diabetic needles. And it was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> How much did it hurt? Oh, it was hurting a lot. It was, man, it, it, it sucked. But uh, yeah, no, right now it's still in a painful process because the magnets are closing it up and it's starting to heal. Oh my God. So how long do you have to keep those on there for? Uh, Man, I was actually talking to a couple people. Actually, uh, Darren Wynn actually messaged me and be like, hey, two weeks, no contact. Cause it's going to blow right back up if you don't. So I'm like, damn it. I don't want to do that. But, uh, yeah. So it looks like about for sure, about a week, uh, I'm probably, I'm probably going to just for safekeeping. I'm probably going to keep these on now. Like, is it throbbing? Like, uh, it actually was earlier. It was earlier, but I took the magnets off just for a second, but I put them back on. So it kind of calmed down, but no, nah, it, like if they're on and if I actually just touch it, it, it'll start throbbing again. Okay. And in the fight, was it hurting you? No, actually it was actually the funniest thing about it is that this actually happened within like the last minute of the fight. Really? I, I, and it, it just happened to be terrible, terrible timing. I, I shoulder rolled a little bit and then he caught me at the ear and that's whenever it blew up. I was like, ah, damn it. <laughs> and that thing that they had on you, uh, that clamp thingy there, that you had to do all the media with and all and all that. How long did you have to have that on there for? I had it on for for most of the night, but it was throbbing so bad that like with everything else around it, like with already filling it back up, I just said screw it and just took it off, and it eased the pain a lot. But yeah, it was just terrible. My ear just was so much bigger by the end of the night, but uh, with without it on, but I just was like, man, it, it hurts so much. I'm gonna have to drain it again. Either which way I look about each, whatever way I look at it, I'm going to have to drain it again because everything else on the ear was already blowing back up. So I was like, man, screw it. I took the clamp off and it, it felt a lot better, but it sucked having to be like uh, using the needles for an hour just to drain all this out. So another win in the UFC, another impressive performance. I don't know what that one judge thought 30 to 27 for uh, Davey, but it doesn't matter. You get the W. Not a finish, though. Your first uh, fight that goes. The distance, how'd you feel about it overall? Uh, honestly, yeah, that one judge, he, he came over from boxing, and, I, man, I feel sorry for the boxers, man. I'm, I'm, I feel sorry for those guys. But, uh, no, I feel great. Like, Davey was a great – is a great opponent. He's never been finished, like, by a TKO or anything like that. So, going like me, like, it, it's not like uh, – it would have been better to get the finish. That would have been able to be like, oh, man, I'm stating my case to be in the top 15 to, to face all these tough – uh, tougher guys, but at the same time, it's Davy Grant. You're not going to get the finish over that guy. But uh, there's some things I need to clean up. Uh, I got, I did get hit a little bit, so I got, I got to clean a lot of this stuff up. But honestly, I feel really, really great about it. I saw his face afterwards. In fact, you guys went for dinner. What was that? I, I saw a picture that you posted. He was at dinner with you, right? Or lunch, dinner, whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, it, it was dinner. We actually ended up uh, going out to dinner uh, a little bit after he, he would. Uh, he was in a uh, message with my, with my manager. So we ended up going to uh, this uh, Mexican spot to go, to go eat and uh, having a good time at, and then they ended up uh, uh, for, since we got fight of the night, they, they uh, tricked the waiters and said it was our, it was our birthday at the same time. So we uh, both ended up getting uh, uh birthday little flan cakes. So it was pretty cool. I love that. But um, is that like you, I mean, I know, I know when you had your last fight with Costa, you guys were buds it seems like you kind of dig being buddies with your opponent. Like you don't want any animosity. Yeah. It, to me, honestly, it really doesn't matter. Cause at the end of the day, we're going to have to fight in the cage. Uh, I don't care if you, if you like me, uh, man, if you want to be friends, it's even better. Cause uh, I, I, I tell my brother all the time, I was like, I, I like you. I love you, but I'll punch you in the face. I don't care. Throw a hundred dollars my way. I'll punch you in the face, man. But uh, 
yeah, I, I can like you and everything. You know, I, I got a lot of training partners that we spar, you know, I punch them in the face too. So it's like, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. It's, if we're going to get paid for it, we're going to get paid for it. And uh, it, to me, like, it doesn't make, it doesn't make me like not fight, fight you a little bit harder than any, like, no, it's, it's still the same motivation. I still have the same goals to be at the top. So if we're friends, we're friends. If we're not, Hey, it's, it's going to be cool. It's going to be uh, cool knocking you out. And uh, you know, you know, being, being friends afterwards, you know, after I knock you out. When, when you're sitting at dinner, I know you weren't sitting side by side, but like, are you guys actually talking about the fight and replaying moments? Uh, we didn't really talk too much about the fight. We we're just kind of just like, man, that was a great fight. Like that was a really great fight and good stuff, man. We were just, we were just like, kind of just like happy. Like it was like a, just a happy, it was just kind of just happy. Honestly, we really didn't talk too much about the fight. Uh, you know, I pretty much just told us like, dude, look at what you did in my ear. Uh, look what you did in my ear. And he was like, bro, my nose, like your jab. <laughs> I was like, man, I don't know. I think I'd rather have the nose than the, than the ear right now. Cause this, this right here, man, I had to be in that, like uh, draining my ears for hours. And uh, while I was walking around in Vegas for a little bit, man, people were giving me looks like, what, what is that? Like, yeah. It, Look like another person was growing on the side of my head. Oh my gosh. It's amazing that you guys can fight each other and then go out and, and, and do all that. And I'm happy to hear that the, you know, the night ended on a positive note for you. We saw that you were very emotional after the fight. Obviously, um, you have been through a lot, my friend. Wow. You have been through a lot over the last few years. Most recently, the passing of your coach, the legend, Saul Solis. First fight week without him, right? First time he was, he was not in your corner, correct? In your entire career? Uh, he was, uh, he wasn't in my corner for the Randy Costa fight. Uh, cause that's when he, that's when we found out that he had, uh, contract, contracted COVID, uh, it was actually the test for us to fly out to Vegas. Uh, and yeah, so I ended up like, so if it wasn't for me fighting, we probably, uh, wouldn't have found out that he had COVID. So it was like, uh, that was, I, I, I don't know. I, at, at the time, whenever he, took that test. I was just like, man, my coach is strong. Uh, he's going to come through this. He's going to like, he's, he's going to be on the other side of this. And, uh, yeah. And I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought that I would have showed up to this, this, uh, this event with great, uh, with David, uh, not having my coach, you know, and it really sucked. Uh, it really, really sucked. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah, it was, it's, it's been a really, it's been, a, it's been a really long training camp. It was a, it was a roller coaster of a training camp just due to the fact that like I'm so used to seeing my coach there, so used to walking to the gym and just seeing uh uh Saul and just being just seeing him like man, like even like the little quirky quirky jokes that he would make or just you know, the little advice that he would give and just just everything. I I, I miss it. And it, this one was hard because like he wasn't there. He's he's been like like my role model and never, like after my dad had passed away, like he was like my, my father figure. So I lost, I, in 2016, I lost my father and this year I lost a father figure. So like it, it sucks. And it like, it, it really brought me down. And that's another reason why I'm like, uh, kind of trying to take some time off right now after this fight, uh, just to make sure I get like my mental health and everything else and kind of just deal with everything. Cause honestly, I still haven't dealt with it. Like, cause right after, right after everything happened, I'd ended up pretty much being coach for all these other fighters who had fights coming up, making sure that they were good, making sure everything was still running. And then I uh, went to go corner my training partner, Leo, for his UFC fight, uh, for his UFC fight. And then I had to corner all my other training partners for their upcoming fights for Fury Fighting Championship. And uh, after that, I ended up getting booked for a fight. So I ended up putting myself in a camp and running my own camp for everything. And it was, uh, it was, it was hard because I had to switch the hats from being a fighter to a coach at times. And then on top of that, I'm, I ha I'm having a, a baby on the way. So I'm having to worry about that stuff, buying a house, doing all this whole bunch of things. So like, it's been like, just for like me to even deal with everything. I just kind of just like, it's been, it's been hard. It's been hard to deal with. Um, you were obviously very emotional afterwards. Did you keep it all inside? Like, was that the the release that you had been bottling up? Oh, absolutely. I absolutely. I, I knew that that was going to happen too. It just, uh, the last like 30 seconds of that fight, like I just was kind of just looking for time to kind of wind down a little bit. Cause I, I, I felt like I, I, I was, I had won the fight and I was just kind of just like, man, these, those last 30 seconds felt so long. Cause at that point in time, I was just like, 
I was trying to avoid the uh, like, just start like, kind of just like, because uh, it was just in the back. It was it was in the back of my mind the whole entire fight. Uh, just him not there. Every time I went to my corner, I, I was I always have conversations with my with my coach. We never. It would never be like him just like coaching me through it. I'd ask him like a question, or we'd be having a back and forth conversation in the corners. And this time it it was different, and it was just like I had my training partners with me who've been with me through thick and thin, but it just it just wasn't the same. So like the last thirty seconds, I was I was doing my best to just be like just get through these thirty seconds, just thirty seconds. And after that, uh, the bell rang, hug Davy, and I just. I wanted to walk around with my hands up, but I just sat down and just was just like the the doctor thought there was something wrong with me, but I was just like I I just need a moment, man. Like I I, I can't. I, I just I just couldn't hold it in anymore. It just all the emotions that that I had was it just fell out. It just I I couldn't contain myself. How was fight week? Fight week was uh fight week was was. I kept busy, if that makes sense. But I ended up doing what my coach liked to do. Like he liked going to the strip, sitting at a table, and uh, you know, gambling. And I was, I ended up picking up some of the stuff. Like I was playing a couple of gambling games, just kind of just like, just that get out. And plus, I knew if I sat at the, uh, if I sat down, I wouldn't have, uh, like, and just did nothing and just try to focus on the fight. I wouldn't have focused. I, I would have been like, I wouldn't. It, it would have all just been hitting me even harder. So I kept myself busy throughout the week. But in the back of my mind, that's that's the one thing that I always, like, that was, like, keeping keeping me. Like, whenever I was cutting weight, everything was just pouring. Like, it, it was hard. It was, it was a really hard week, but I, I was able to push through all of it. Has someone assumed his role in your life? Like, do you have a new head coach, or is it just going to be you and your training partners? Me and my training partners, as of now, I do have a strength and conditioning coach who's been, uh, who knows uh, martial arts as well. Uh, but I, as far as like the MMA fighters, I was already, I was already on the role of uh, running the fighters camp itself. So, uh, pretty much that's where that's where I'm going to be at. Pretty much like I'm going to be coach and fighter, and and honestly, I, I've seen it work so many times, like with a lot of great great fighters themselves, like James Krause, you have a Ryan Faber, all those guys. They do a very well job. And also, at the same time, it's actually been beneficial for, for myself because I had to put myself in their shoes and help them work on what they've been working on, like what they need to work on. So it has been helping me out. Uh, and I feel like it's only leveled me up a lot. Like, I, it, it's, it's been helpful. So, uh, but, yeah, I do have somebody who I, I, I can go and, like, confide to at times and just, like, uh, and just ask because, you know, older person – uh, and strength conditioning coach and coach Phil, like he's like, if I need to talk to somebody, he's the guy. What made Saul such a special coach? Man, it, it was everything. He didn't like, there's, it's, uh, man, it, it's kind of hard just to pinpoint one thing. It's a lot, it's a mixture of a lot of things. Like, he was so like hands on with everything. He, he didn't just like, uh, he cared, like he cared a lot. He cared so much too. Uh, like he, he would sound mean and the practices, but once after the practice was over, he would give you like that tough love type of deal. And it was, uh, like, and, and it felt good whenever he gave you the compliments, gave you like, Hey, like you did good today. And like that made your whole month if he ever gave you a compliment. And then on top of that, he was just such a good person. Like he gave, like after my dad passed away, he knew that like I needed something, so he he gave me a job. I was he hired me on as assistant. Like he made sure I was at the gym. He always made sure that I was doing the right things. He kind of did a lot of things for me, and not even just for myself. Like I ended up finding out after he had passed, like so much of the other stuff that he did for other people, and just kind of it was just kind of just built in his character. And he was just a good person overall, and and like he. Like, for me, he didn't have me pay any gym dues whenever, I, like, I was coming up. Like, from amateur to pro, he never made me pay, pay a single dime in, in, uh, in gym fees or coach fees or anything like that. And that, that says something, you know. And I, I always took his time for uh, – I, I never took his time for granted. I always loved every second of it. He was just an amazing coach because, like, you didn't have to say – like, if you just said that you were having a problem, he would go, he would go out of his way – to make sure he helped fix your problem without even you knowing at the time. And, and it is just, it was just a lot. Cause 
<laughs> he's just he was just a great person, man. A super great person. Uh, a legend of mixed martial arts, uh, highly regarded and has coached some of the, the greatest fighters of all time, including yourself. And I'm sure he's very proud of your performance. I was reading your uh, your UFC.com bio, and in there you wrote that uh, your job when you were signed to the UFC was you were a meter reader. Are you, yeah. You were like one of those yeah. dudes that like would walk around and see if like you've paid your 25 cents. I hate those guys. Uh Oh no, not those guys. Oh. It wasn't that guy. Oh, okay. No, no, but I'm, I'm the guy that still people still hated to see me around. So I was a a, a meter reader, but for water. Oh. So if you didn't pay your water bill, I was I was the guy shutting your water off. Damn. So they definitely didn't like. Me. That's even worse. That's even worse than the thirty dollar uh, parking ticket. So you would go to people's houses and see. Is that is that how it works? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. No, at, at certain time of the month, like closer to the end of the month, if you didn't have your bill paid, uh, we we came around, cut your water off. Oh. And, uh, you know, go out of the merry way. Did you yeah, feel horrible it, about it that? Oh, I always like everything else about that job was so was so fantastic, except for that day. Yeah, those that day those that day was just terrible. I've had people uh, come crying uh, outside, running outside the house, crying. I just I just. Man, I gave even though I shouldn't be saying it now. I did give people a couple of passes, like uh, if, like if I did see them in a rough spot, I did turn a blind eye and just let them like keep the water and say that I turned them off and all that stuff. I know I, I can't be saying like, yeah, no, <laughs> I shouldn't be saying that. But uh, come on, I respect you for yeah. saying that. I respect you for doing that, man. Got to have yeah, a heart. And uh, but like I. That was like a once every blue moon. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that every single time. Like I, I would want to because there's there's some families that really needed it. And but at the same time, uh, I would walk by some of these houses that that would have like a like a, a like a a bigger house than what I have, and just be like, bro, like you can't pay your water bill. Like what is going on here? But it, it, I don't know. There was a mixture of feelings that day, but I didn't like those days because. It was just so much more work and just so much like it it took it took a lot of time and I just really didn't like that day. But on any other day, like people were so nice and just walking around. My I had some really great employees. I had a great boss. Uh my boss was actually like he he was so lenient with me and it, it was it was amazing. Yeah, he, he was a great boss. You don't you don't still do that, right? Oh no, no, no. I, I after my UC debut, like I quit fight week of my debut. Okay. So I like I, I knew that I, I was gonna be in a in a great position. I, I knew I had to jump in this full time right after that. Um your dad was a former uh was he a Golden Gloves boxer? Yes, he was he was a Golden Gloves boxer and then right after that he joined the military. Okay. So he's the one that got you into fighting. Yeah, he yeah, he got me into fighting. He was looking at uh he like I didn't really start training until I was fifteen, but that was jujitsu at that time. I didn't do any striking or anything like that. Every once in a while, because uh, my dad was like a blue collar guy working twelve hour, twelve hour a week, uh, twelve hours a day a week. Uh, yeah, twelve hour work days. Yeah, so that so pretty much like on the weekends, if he wasn't tired, uh, wasn't that tired, he would show us some boxing. But other than that, like it was, I started off with jujitsu, but he he pretty much gave me my love of like combat sports i was a really big boxing fan back in the day but uh now it's like i'm a really big fan of fighting still even if i am the ufc i like i i'm a very big ufc fan uh did he try to push you towards a pro boxing career he we, we, at the times like i think i was like eight nine years old we we're looking for boxing gyms and everything but just at the time we didn't we couldn't find one that we that we liked and also at the time my dad was uh was getting was uh was pretty much was getting sober at that time. So it was kind of like a, a hard, hard point. Like uh, it was like hard at that time. But once we found like kickboxing, cause what brought me into the MMA was the, there's kickboxing classes and I only did that for a week. And then they took the kickboxing classes away. And then I pretty much just jumped over to jiu-jitsu and uh, like my dad saw that I had a love for the competition of jiu-jitsu. And then uh, I finally jumped into my first MMA fight and he was like, if this is what you want to do, like it's, it, it'd be great for you to do this. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. And, uh, but yeah, my love for boxing, like kind of like translated over into like what I like to do for MMA and, uh, pretty much, uh, that's like, uh, that was a good, like, uh, meet in the middle for my dad. 
A lot of debate. Who's the best boxer in MMA? Who's the best boxer in the UFC? Do we need to start talking about Adrian Yanez as well in that discussion? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It, it needs to be said. Like, I, like every time I see someone, uh, see those uh, forums be put up or they make lists or anything like that, I'm just always, I'm always annoyed because I'm just like, I know I'm one of the best. I know I'm one of the best. I should be up there for sure. Uh, and it's not even, like, a lot of people look at the offensive stuff and I'm just like, bro, like, you got to look at the defensive side as well. You know, you got to be able to look at the defensive side, the footwork. You got There's a lot of things to look at. And I'm just kind of like, well, uh, I, I know UFC has Zufa boxing. So, man, Dana White, let's put on some uh, put on some boxing gloves with uh, a lot of these guys at the 135 division. Let's duke it out. I think that would actually be fun. Like uh, a little bit of a fun thing that you can do with UFC fighters who haven't took like an MMA fight in a while. Be like, man, throw on some boxing gloves for Zufa boxing and just have them duke it out. And I have a couple matchups that I would like to see like for myself, you know? Oh. I'm not sure if Zufa boxing is much more than a T-shirt at this point, but it is a great idea. It reminds me of the old uh, Brawl for All tournament that they had in WWE. Who would you like to box? Like, if they set that up, who's your first opponent? Oh, man, there's a lot of guys, man. Of course, the champ, Peter Yan, uh, the interim champ, the interim champ, Peter Yan. I would like to I would like to uh, th- strap on the eights with him. It'd be fun. I would love it. Also, Cody Garbrandt, he has some great boxing as well. I would like to uh, jump in there. Rob Font, Jose Aldo, of course, Sean O'Malley, I think. I think he has some good striking. Uh, who, who else has a uh, – oh, yeah, Julio, Ar- Julio Arce. I know he just lost to Song Yudong, but he has some really great boxing and also Song Yudong as well. It's like they have some really great hands. I think just throw us in a tournament, uh, you know, and we all, we all go out there and duke it out with the, with the boxing gloves on. I think that would be fun. Uh, speaking of the champ, Aljamain Sterling, you, you recently trained with him, right, out in New York? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I went out to New York and trained with those guys. How did that – did that come about because of your situation with, with your coach passing away, or had you been training with them in the past? No, actually, uh, I was, you know, when it was before uh, all this stuff with Aljamain, before he pulled out, uh, before the, the fight got pulled from – you actually pulled me in to uh, kind of like see from a, a boxer from a boxer. You know, boxing from a boxer because he was getting ready for Peter Yan at the time. He wanted somebody that was sort of similar, and he thought that I was uh, pretty similar to Peter. So uh, he flew me out. We got some work in, and then uh, he ended up uh, not fighting uh, Peter uh, due due to the UFC doctors pulling him out. So, uh, yeah, that's how that came about. He hit me up personally. He was like, hey, uh, you know, we want to come out. And I was like, for sure, man. Be able to see how a champ runs his uh, camp, that I think that would be amazing. What was the experience like? Uh, it was it was great, man. Just uh, like honestly, uh, my favorite part was the uh, jujitsu at, at uh, not at Hendo's. It was at Sarah's Sarah yeah. BJJ. It's like just rolling with those guys. Those those guys are are monsters, and I really loved it. And then also, man, Ray Longo too, man. I I love that. I love the energy of those guys in the gym. Just in both gyms, like high energy, like high, all those all those guys. Like a lot of uh, similar uh, mentally focused guys just in there. All, all ready just to keep going and get to work in. You got these people putting in extra work. I love it. I love the environment. It, it's a place I definitely want to go back to. Okay, I was just about to ask you, will you go back? So it sounds like you do want to go back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man, I love I, I love the energy. I, they have a lot of great guys up there. And then also, too, man, Ray Longo. Uh, I don't know if it was Destiny at this point, but at the first on a Monday, whenever I, I first met Ray Longo, he we talked a little bit and then, he pulled me off to the side and showed me the picture with that he had with me and my uh, he had with himself and uh, my coach Saul. Oh wow! And I was like, I at that point I was I had like I kind of had to pull myself away for a second because I almost started tearing up at that moment because it was like it was like about a month after my coach had passed and I was just like, I, I it 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 was it, it brought it brought like oh man it was emotional for me but just the fact that I was like man I'm. It, it was it was super emotional, but just uh, I thought that was, it was so, somewhat like destiny type of deal. Mm. Uh, you mentioned your father, who unfortunately passed away uh, back in 2016, correct? Yes, um, yes sir. You, you found out that he was sick around the time of your birthday, which is around this time, right? Like Thanksgiving time. Yes. Yeah. That picture. Yeah, of, it, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, it, it it was uh crazy because we went to uh, go pick up some turkey at uh so every year we're keeping the tradition alive still is uh, Mike Trin uh, he owns Mike Seafood down here in Houston and uh, uh he would make us some uh, fried turkeys deep fried turkeys and that morning uh 
pretty much like we're we're uh like we we're, were hanging out with them they're deep frying the turkeys and everything and it, 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 everything seemed uh great at that time and then uh later on during that day uh my mom ended up rushing my dad to the to the ER because the doctor called with my dad da- my dad's uh blood test results and just said he needed to be in the ER at like as soon as possible now and I was already at my family's at the time and I get the call from my mom and that's when we show up and uh you know a couple of days passed and then uh that's I remember I went out to eat with my cousin because he, he he showed up from uh from West Texas and we I we took him out he took me out to eat because it was my birthday and I come back and pretty much uh that's when I walked into the news the, about my father so I was like it, it it sucked. I I still I still like uh, I still don't like uh like this time like, around this time I I I get very uh, shut off. I don't really uh, it, it gets hard for me. Yeah, no, I could totally understand that. Um, the picture that you showed that you shared with us after you won Contender Series and you got the contract and you brought the contract to his gravesite. I mean. I can't imagine what that was like. For, it was it was emotional just to see you talk about your father on the show, and then to see that photo. Could you share what that day was like? Because it seemed to me like you you wanted to show him that you you made a promise and you kept your promise, right? That you were going to make it to the UFC. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we we would always talk about it, and we would always talk about because my dad uh uh my dad would always take me to my to my night sessions to my night session training, and he would. Cause he would work all day, and I, I don't even know how he would do it, how he had enough energy to do it. But he showed up to almost all my training sessions at night, and we'd always talk about me getting into the UFC, and he never told me I couldn't do it. And it was like it just it was just nice that uh, like because I hear a lot of uh, a lot of other parents, a lot of like whenever I hear stories about these other parents and like not being as good as my dad, I'm just like. I think my dad's like the perfect role model. My mom's the perfect role model. And like my coach was the perfect role model and all that. And just uh, whenever, whenever I like kind of hear and see other parents kind of just like, I think you should do this instead of letting their kids chase their dreams. And my dad was one of the ones that always told me, he's like, you need to chase your dreams. Like I never got to live my dream because most of his friends ended up passing away because of where he was at. And he, he just always had that what if in his head. And he's like, I'd never want my kids to have that what if. So he always pushed us to, to follow our dreams. And my dad always told me, he's like, if there's a will, there's a way you keep going no matter what. And don't, don't quit. If just because it gets hard, you don't quit. And that's pretty much how my training camp was for that, for that fight. Like COVID shut down our gym. We're training in a garage. <laughs> We're training in a warehouse in the back of a t-shirt company. And like, we didn't quit, you know, it just all made it happen for us. And after that, like after I got the contract, and I, I just knew I just there's one place I wanted to take it, and that was uh, uh to go see my dad, and, and it just the this the sense of like relief that I got once once I got there. I didn't know they took a picture either too. Like I I, I was just want I just wanted my moment, and uh they got a picture of me while I was there, and yeah, it, it was it it felt good, like like man, like you you believed in me. And that's all that I needed. And like the people that really matter believed in me and that's, that's why I'm here. And, you know, and now it's to the point where I need to believe in myself so I know I can get to that title. And they always saw this in me. My dad always saw this in me. My dad always knew I was going to be in the UFC. My dad knows I'm going to be a champion. Like my coach Saul knows I'm going to be a champ. It's just me doing what I do and putting in the work and me believing in myself. And that's, that's what I need to that's what I need to do because it's it it is hard. It is hard it is, at this point, and you know it it, it kind of does like make me like it makes me feel good, but also it kind of sucks because the the couple people that I wish like to be like to tell all this stuff to right now, like telling all these all these good things that are happening to me right now. I want to be able to tell them, but I can't because you know they're not here. Like man, I just bought a like I just bought a house. I just bought a house with just due to fighting. I just. I got a, I got a family. I got like, I don't have a job. I'm like, I'm having a family in December, like all this stuff. And I can't like tell them and it sucks. Like I, then the people who I would, uh, uh, the people who I want to go run and tell to all these great things that are happening. And I can't, you know, I feel like so you're having a kid. 
First yeah, one. December. First one. Boy or girl? Oh, uh, boy. Uh, he's going to be a junior. Oh, wow. That is amazing, man. That is amazing. Yeah. I'm super excited, man. Super excited. I get to be uh, what my, to my kid what my dad was to me, and that, that like, really, like, it excites me. If uh, if one day your son says he wants to be a fighter like you like your like your dad would you would you be okay with that? Man, that's kind of hard. <laughs> that's really hard. Uh, uh, of course, I'm gonna be trying to steer my kid into other, into these other sports like like maybe like soccer or baseball or all these other things uh, where they get paid so much more. Uh, but uh, if he w- really wanted to fight, I would probably just be like, let's. Let's do jiu-jitsu or, or wrestling. Let's avoid the boxing for now until later. But, uh, yeah, I, I would be kind of hesitant on it just because I know what the sport entails. And, but if, if he had this undying, relentless, like, I want to fight type of deal, I, I, would, I would let him. And perhaps next is Sean O'Malley if he wins. Oh yeah, he got uh, he got Paeva in front of him. Uh, yeah. yeah, that that'd be a nice fight in front of me. Like I I would I would definitely love that fight, uh, just because it's Sean O'Malley. He kind of almost like he gets the most noise out of this division, and like it's sometimes it's almost like a better constellation prize than fighting for the title because you got someone in front of you like uh, Sean O'Malley who at times brings even more eyes than than the than the people at the top. So yeah, of course that would be fun. Uh, are you impressed with his boxing? You didn't. I don't think you mentioned his name when you were talking about the. Uh, the oh, yeah. <laughs> he has he has really good striking, but yeah, his uh, his hands they're they're good. Uh, I just think if we strap on the eights, I definitely put him to sleep. Adrian, we're not supposed to root for people in this job in this chair. I am rooting for you, my man. Honestly, I am rooting for you. Uh, I wish you nothing but the best. I want to give you a hug. You're making me all emotional. Uh, your story is unbelievable. And uh, you are a true role model for people who have been through a lot. And, and even on Saturday, you were talking about mental health and taking some time. I hope you can take some time now um, around the holidays and after everything you've done. But I can't imagine anyone not rooting for you, not liking you, not wanting to see you one day hold that belt uh, because you, you have earned it, my friend. You, you have earned it right now uh, and you still have so much more to do. So I just wish you the best, continued success. Uh, I know there's a ton of people who are behind you, and I'd get hit up a lot over the last few weeks for people, you know, telling me to to have you on the show, and they were all right. Uh, you you should have been on the show a long time ago. So I'm just really happy that you came on today, and uh, congrats on the win, and congrats on everything, and congrats on the baby in December. That's going to be incredible. Man, thank you so much. Thank you for having me on. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, I'll talk to you soon, Adrian. All the best. Thank you. All right, there he is, Adrian Yanez. Whew. That was uh, that was intense stuff. I don't know how he didn't uh, he, he didn't uh, break in that one. I was uh, I was struggling there, but I think you can't really see me, so I think I uh, I think I avoided some of the uh, the emotions, if you will. But what a story! What a uh, what, I mean, what an individual! How do you not want to root for that guy? His last loss was in November of 2018. Uh, and he has not lost since. A very impressive run. Four in a row now in the UFC. Five if you include, of course, uh, Dana White Contender Series, which happened just uh, in August of 2020, so a little over a year ago. Uh, His birthday is coming up next week, a week from today, turning 28. This is another name who, you know, I feel like the same with Brady. I feel like the same with... uh, Mokhaev with Yanez. Like I said at the top of the show, four newcomers to this program, um, four names who are going to be relevant, four names who I think have incredible backstories, and four names who remind us why we love the sport so much. Of course, every sport has stories like this. Of course, every sport has you know people who have overcome a lot. Uh, not every sport has people who are willing to tell their story to share their story, to be inspirations. And uh, MMA is just chock full of those people. So thank you very much to Adrian for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. And I can't wait to see what he does next. If O'Malley wins in December, uh, an omalley Yanez fight would be incredible. And yes, a uh, good call. Great call from uh, uh, Casey. 
four straight performance bonuses as well for Yanez. That was staring me right in the face over here. Performance of the night, performance of the night, performance of the night, and fight of the night. And uh, hopefully he gets to fight in uh, in Houston. I know it's been uh, a bunch of Apex cards for him. They're calling him uh, Apex Adrian. <clears throat> Excuse me, but uh, hopefully he's able to fight in Houston. They just had that card in August. They've got this deal with the Toyota Center. You'd have to think that they'd want to have him in Houston. In fact, I was reading. I was going to ask him about this, but I felt like I kept him long enough. Um yeah, they used to drive. He 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 uh, he he told a story in one of his interviews that he used to drive with his dad past Toyota Center, and his dad would tell him that one day he's going to fight at the home of the Rockets. And so, what a great story it would be if he actually gets that opportunity to fight uh, in Houston. Of course, he's fought in Houston a bunch in his pre UFC career, but to fight at the Toyota Center uh, as a member of the UFC with as good as he is doing as of late is just uh, an amazing thing. And I hope it comes to fruition. So. Uh, thank you very much to Adrian. Thank you to all our guests. Uh, we do have some show left, though. Don't go anywhere. We've got GC coming up top of the hour to tell us about his picks from this past weekend. But first, my friends, it is now time. it's time to open up your ears and your minds, MMA fans. It's time for yes. Rick's Picks. Rick's Picks. Rick's, Rick's picks. picks are lots of fun, and his hair is Oh, wow, look at that. We're switching. You already News. know Wow, it there he is. Oh, oh. <laughs> we got the desktop, too. Boys and girls, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Switch, there it's he the is. Craze, it's, the a, it's an early storm. reveal. It's like when you see someone Live before they walk Vox out Studios through Gorilla. Oh, and it closes on him. It's time for that was interesting right there that's like when someone's walking out like goldberg when he walks out of the locker room we got to see you there in your new spot i gotta do the the sniffing the pyro do the whole deal uh the goldberg deal look at your spot here yeah it's nice beautiful right i mean can we give a shout out to the crew well, shout out to the crew for for making it happen Trini welcome Vaz, to, alex welcome to my humble abode everyone back there frank of course frank how much uh how much did you do about you know this whole thing? How much uh, work did you put into I just, it? I just run the feeder, man. Okay. <laughs> this is incredible. Yes, the genesis behind this was there was the one spot that you used to have back in the day when you were you know actually working on the show. Now you just show up like 20 minutes before. It's amazing. Everyone's like, is Eric coming today? He's Mr. Monday Afternoon. I'll have you know I was the first one here. Yeah? But, I, but I, yeah, actually. Where were but you? I, I everyone was downstairs. Was, everyone was or talking upstairs. smack. Sorry. Everyone was like, oh, where's Eric? Where's Eric? Mr. Mo it, he, I said he only shows up past 12 because you're Mr. Monday Afternoon. You're not Mr. Monday Morning. That's right. Yeah, we, we need to keep up the gimmick. And so you used to have that seat, but now things have evolved. Joe is in that seat. You're back there. We got Connor... To your right, now everyone's got a spot. I mean, could we even do a quick reveal, or would that be would that screw you up, Frank? It would totally. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, just want to say we got multiple spots now with cameras back there. That's right. This is pretty we, amazing. We got stations. We got stations. I love this. Uh, it's come quite a long nice. Way. Uh, maybe some decorating to be done. Yeah, I but, feel um, like we need some. De I mean, like the uh, the outlet behind you there. We'll see if we can dig up the man bun Barbie. See if we can. Yeah, Maybe I feel like, yeah. stick them up there. This could be your own little <laughs> Joe, spot. Joe says no. Joe, Joe <laughs> gave me the, the cut that. Uh, this could be your spot. Well, I have to say I'm, I'm, I'm emotionally uh, empty right now after yeah. that Adrian Yan has interview. Why do you say it like that? No, no reason. <laughs> no reason at all. <laughs> no reason at all, Ariel. Uh, four great characters, four yeah. interesting individuals, and Stipe Miocic, uh, future UFC broadcaster or MMA broadcaster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, but I mean, good mix of the veterans, the the people who have made this sport um, what it is, and then the people who are on the rise. Um, I think today we got a, a lot of those uh, people who are on the rise, and it was good to hear. Let me ask you a question. Between, yeah. I, th I think the jury probably still out on Loopy. So, Mohamed Mokhaev, Sean Brady, Adrian Yanez, who becomes champion first? If one of those three is becoming a champion, who becomes champion first? I think Yanez. You think so? I think Brady. I think you nailed it. That that Brady is further along and, and prime for the next spot. I just don't think at 170 that's the easiest road. Um, I think Yanez has a better chance um, against that field, and I think he is in that running for best boxing in the UFC. So uh, or in all of MMA. So um, I think it would be Yanez, not based on him being further than Brady. I think Brady is the front runner, um, but that 170 division is just too tough, in my opinion. I was going to say Mokhaev only because there's not a lot of 125ers, so the road. Yeah. I mean, t 
timeline wise, that's the only thing there. It's like how fast can he get there? Um, I think you know, obviously, Giannis is probably going to crack the the top right. ten at this point. So just a little bit quicker. Um, and Brady's knocking on the door, so it comes down to time. Yeah. Um, this looks great. I love this. I love that we have you here. That you guys won't have to change seats because Joe is there. Oh, it's and, nice. This is where I've been all show. Yeah, you don't just have to relax move. It. I mean, the whole purpose is so that you, you know, you're not inconvenienced. You don't have to move from your spot. It's Listen, they thing. make things happen for Mister Mister Monday Afternoon. So I was thinking, like, we're we're still keeping the uh, the Rick's picks theme. It's too good to pass up. But like, shout out what, to Mike Heck, obviously, of course, of course, legend, uh, member of the team. But we're not doing much picking. You're not bringing much picks to the table. Well, the the gambling portion of this has right. fully moved this way, thankfully, yeah. <laughs> uh, to somebody much more capable and competent, um, and uh, is in good hands. Yeah, but uh, Rick's picks wasn't always picks. That's right. At the end, it was it was selections of like stories and social media moments and things like that. Yeah. Maybe maybe the the precursor for my eventual career. Uh, picking those social media moments out. That's true. You're saying this curation, school, curation, having you know, no aggregation, what, what is, aggregation, doing the thing. Uh, you guys are smashing it over there. I love it. Uh, Thank you. Shout out. Doing great work. Shout out to the team. Uh, yeah. So with that in mind, I thought, all right, let's let's go back to the picking. But like, basically, make this you know your own canvas. Yeah. Uh, a few people it could be one. It could be two. It could be three. You know, I I used to do the thing where I like picked out like my three stars of the week, sort of taking that from uh, from hockey, but that was very performance based. This, yes. you know, you're, the amazing thing is there was once a time where my finger was so much more on the pulse than you. You just kind of moonlighted as an MMA guy. <laughs> now you know what everyone's tweeting, Instagramming, hmm. Reddit. You're all over that. I mean, you're the one. I mean, could we be honest? You're the one who told me about you know PF Changs. Yes. You're the one who alerted me to PF Chains. I had no idea. It was, uh, I mean, it was obviously a life changing. Pizzi is going to be very mad at me. Uh, you were first for taking credit for this. Why yes. did he tell you? Did Pizzi? Yeah, Pizzi. Oh, P really? Pizzi, I didn't know that. Pizzi was a little aggrieved because he <laughs> wants he wants it to be known that it was his uh, thing. Oh, but damn! Okay. I planted those seeds quite a while ago. Um, shout out, shout out to the homeless cats. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, so you're the guy. And so I felt like, all right, now your finger is on the pulse much more than I am. You know, I'm out here, you know, hobnobbing with Becky Lynch in the back, Seth Rollins. You're a busy man. Yeah, I've got a lot going on. I'm hosting um, press conferences and whatnot. So I want some picks. I want yeah. some people who are doing things, noteworthy things, that may be flying under the radar or maybe not. Yeah, I have a feeling these are not going to be ones you've missed. Uh, these are not going to be ones that flew under the radar, but I think deserving a little bit of recognition this week and, and um, a little bit of acclaim. First up. Al Iaquinta. Yes. I think Al deserves a shout out. Um, I did a little bit of this on Twitter, but I think it's it's necessary. Uh, on his Call Me Al podcast, he seemed to allude to, he didn't say definitively, but seemed to allude to that this would be it, that he would be calling it a career uh, after his most recent loss. Um, again, not, not definitive, but if he is calling it a career, I think we have to give a tip of the cap to, to an original, uh, an OG, a one of one, you know, Boo me, boo you. All, all the moments that we've had stepping in uh, on on one day's notice against Habib, um, an absolute legend. So shout out to Al Iaquinta on a great career. If this truly is it, if it's not, then great. We get more Al Iaquinta uh, fights in the future, which are always great. Um, but if it is uh, the end of the ride, it was a great one. Thank you to Al. Great career. Amazing. Um, actually, uh, to let you all know, I, I did reach out to Al to have him on the program. Said he needs a little time. Obviously understand that. Uh, he's always been very gracious. I mean, I'll never forget, he came on the show the Monday after the Habib fight, which was like yep. the craziest few days of his life. So he has always done right by us. Uh, as you said, he didn't officially say it was done. Yeah. And uh, the body has been giving him some issues. You know, that was his first fight in like, what, two and a half years or something like that. Yep. So um, I wouldn't be surprised. But he's still relatively young. Yeah. Right? Oh, I think there's still fight left in him. I think it's, you know, l l let's call it what it is. He really has a career in, in the That's real right. estate thing. That is something that he easier. is doing. And it makes it easier to say, let me focus my energy into this, invest, commit, and and do that. Um, I, what I don't want to see from Ally Quinta or any fighter is having to do it. Um, if he doesn't want to do it, I don't think he has to. I think his his legacy is established. He has a, another career, and he could ride off into the sunset doing that. You love... 
bringing back the uh, the Jorge Masvidal clip. Like, I mean, that was one of your favorite anniversary clips. It is an all time I mean, clip. <laughs> would, would you debate? Would you dispute this? No, it was the best. Few remember that it was a Saturday. It was a rare. Now it's it's a common thing. It was a rare Saturday afternoon card when they were in Virginia. In Virginia, yeah. In yeah. Well, what fifteen, fourteen? What is it? Six. You don't often see people kind of lean that heavily into the booing. You hear you you know you often hear them either playing it up or they'll just you know do give me more or, or say you know or be surprised by it. But he he wanted to address it then and there, and I think that is one of the moments that made Al a fan favorite and, and an original. Yes, I'm trying to see here best ally Quinta performance. I mean, I'd say probably the two Kevin Lee fights absolutely were notable. The Joe Lozon win. Um, back in 2015 was a great one, UFC 183. Uh, Diego Sanchez, but Sanchez was a little bit off that night, so I don't want to take anything away from him. I think the 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 sorry the Kevin Lee win, the first one back in 2014, was a very notable one. And then, of course, he followed that up with the second one as well. I thought I, that, that was... I think the second one was one of those where there were some people who thought, you know, Kevin Lee's on the up and, and Al's not going to be able to do this again. And he yeah. pulled it off in impressive fashion. So I, I would agree with you that those two wins are are the staples. But he went the distance with Habib. Went the distance with Habib, stood on the feet with him. Um, a lot of people uh, on the timeline talking about giving Habib his hardest fight. I think, you know, we have to look at that fight for what it was. Al was stepping in on one day's notice. Habib was fighting on one day's notice. That was kind of an anomaly fight, but no doubt that he showed he was game in that fight um, and took Habib the distance. No, no, you know, no matter how you fall on the performance itself, uh, that will forever be there. Listen, he took him the distance, five rounds, something that no one else did. Correct. So, I mean, most people don't make it out of round one or two. So Yeah, so I think you could say that it was his toughest yeah. fight. Why not? Again, the, the circumstances make that make that a, di a different equation right like we're, we're comparing habib and al both adjusting for uh, a new opponent on one day's notice to training camps and, right. and these types of things um so i think it has to exist a little bit outside it's a little bit of an anomaly but ally quinta forever took habib the distance that is, Man, that is a fact he'll always have a home here even if he's not fighting uh real estate tips whatever you know market yeah. tips um so yes great call what else you got i've also got Congrats to Henry Cejudo. Oh yeah, his fiance Anna Carolina. I hope Anna Anna. Um, I hope I have that right. Um, on the birth of their daughter America. So shout out to Henry. Um, yeah, and his, and his fiance Henry all grown up. It's amazing. I mean, you know, triple <laughs> triple C. Um, he just continues to rack up wins. Now he's got this beautiful family going. And truth be told, on the day he retired, this is what he talked about. This was it. He he yeah. talked about starting this family. He talked about doing this. Um, he continues to kind of be present in the MMA space, uh, calling out Volkanovski and, and others. Um, but this was what he said he was going to focus his energy toward, and he has achieved this. This this <laughs> family is is happy. Did he get married too? I think fiance. Or oh, is he already married? No, I don't know. Uh, well, because he, it he was might actually, be. It was with another lady last year that he was talking about and then he you know he, yes he called the audible yes <laughs> it, it is a new woman um he might already be married i, I believe fiance but i could be wrong there should i Either not have mentioned that was that no i think it's fair to say like but i think for you know it it was him identifying that this was what he wanted this to pursue wanted. the the family was, was the important thing and now he has uh, a beautiful daughter maybe now and, that he has the the child it gives him even more motivation to come back. True or false, Henry Cejudo yeah. fights again. Oh, boy. True. Um, I don't know if it will be necessarily uh, a UFC fight. I could see him doing like a boxing type thing, certainly. Interesting. Um, so I think he will fight again. Um, yeah. Do we consider like grappling matches fighting or does this have no, to be fight. a sanctioned? No, no, no. I'm not talking Hamza Chamay of Jack Hermanson, who might be on the list as well. It was very impressive what he did. I mean, impressive the, performance. the match didn't even start. They didn't even do the intros and they're going at it, those guys. Yeah, uh, impressive for both. Good for them. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's not a lot of people who would who would be, who would risk it the way Jack did and said, let, you know, let me grapple Hamza at this moment. So um, shout out to both of them for that performance. But um, yeah, I think he will fight again. What I about you? Um, I'm going to say yes. He's still very yeah. young. He's too young. He's too accomplished. He's too good, quite frankly. Like, and he hasn't taken any damage. Well, I mean, he's taken damage, but uh, I, mean, I think... Uh, like a considerable amount. I know he's had the surgeries and stuff, but it, like blows to the head, I mean. 
Yeah, certainly the, the the concussive damage is probably low, but just how many years he's been yeah, competing no, in, in athletics body. and sports, his body, and and also look, you know, truth be told, not every fight was was a one way traffic thing. Even right. even just recently as the Marlon Moraes fight, he you know that was a rough that was a rough go uh, before he turned that one around. So um, if he never fought again, his legacy is absolutely secure as one of the best fighters of all time, combat sports athletes of all time. Oh, for sure. I think he had enough uh, with the weight cuts and everything. People don't. Yeah. We only know about these guys like Olympics on. We don't look at their youth, you know, career, and then he was bred for this. Am, he, yeah. he uh, on the uh, all the way up into like the UFC career was the icing on the cake for Henry Cejudo. He has been competing for so long. By the way, does your phone light up for every notification that you get, or just text? Because it's lit up. Why like, are you seeing that? Yes, every time. <laughs> it's 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 a Paul Heyman gimmick that you have the phone right next to you lighting up. Uh, I I have a lot of notifications. Every time it's you get a of, notification, it lights job. up. It's part of the job. Jeez, Louise! It was like right at the point where we couldn't see the notification, but we could see the this phone is, light this up. This is prime time, Mister Monday Afternoon. That's right, that's this, right. this is when this is when the phone is ringing. Uh, all right, who else you got? Last one, uh, Halle Berry. I want to oh. I want to uh, give some shine to Halle Berry. Uh, I don't for the fil- for the film. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to move on from that for the film bruised um our sport um can be welcoming at times and not welcoming at times um but i think somebody who is giving a really good faith effort to uh shine a spotlight on the sport not only just on the sport of mma in general but um on women's mma in particular uh having valentina shevchenko in the movie um taking a risk in her directorial debut um, if you hear about the story of, of how this film came came together, it wasn't very easy. And uh, shout out to Halle Berry for for what making it. Was not that easy about it. She's saying it was hard to get it greenlit, funded. Oh. She had to f- step in as director. She wasn't the original person cast in the lead role. Um, Who was? I believe uh, I was listening to Sm- the Smartless podcast. Hat oh, tip, that's a great podcast. Uh, Ariel Hawani, who put me onto it. Oh, yeah. And I think she was saying that it was going to be Blake Lively. Uh, that, but then ended Blake up not Lively. being. Yeah. From Gossip Girl? Yeah, well, I mean, she's yeah, also she's, been in feature films. And, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. But I mean, um, I just feel like she's not like the fighting type. Like, we've seen Halle Berry as like a superhero. I yeah, don't know. And, and maybe it was the, it was the you know, the perfect match at the end of the day, but... Is this a uh, theatrical release or just... Uh, it is in theaters now, and I believe it's on Netflix on the 24th, I want to say. I'm not um, going to watch. I have watch not seen it yet, um, but I'm looking forward to seeing it. But yeah, I, I think it's pretty cool that... Uh, MMA and specifically women's MMA in, in the context of this story is getting this uh, spotlight. I think it's cool when people want to do this and, and promote MMA. It's cool for Invicta. It's cool for um, Shannon Knapp. Very cool for Valentina Shevchenko. She's getting the rub, right? She's getting some notoriety yeah. here. Uh, very cool how they they pulled it off. I mean, I have mixed feelings towards the the film. Not only personal mixed feelings, but you know, you hear the story about Cyborg, Katzingano. Seems like a few people yeah. were left on the outside looking in because of the UFC's involvement. By the way, what's the UFC's involvement in this film? Is it Valentina? It's Invicta. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe the Valentina portion of it. I wonder why they did uh, Invicta, not UFC. Women's MMA. Yeah, yeah. And most most known and notably um, the leaders in that space specifically. So I'm I'm guessing that was it. But also, I I believe you know there was a time that I was doing work with Invicta on, on the public relations side, and I believe. This project has been in the works for quite a while, and at the time, Invicta was willing to open the doors and, and let them uh, see, you know, what was happening and, and what this was about. So, and she, I mean, um, I remember when she was in the locker room with uh, Cyborg. Remember that That's she right. was in the locker room prior to the. Oh, the Amanda Nunes was it? The Amanda Nunes. I think fight? it was the Nunes fight. Yeah, so that's two thousand. What eighteen? Two thousand. Was it Nunes? Actually, was it Nunes? Clarissa Shields was in the locker room on one of those two, and that might have been Nunez. I, for, I forget. Um, yeah. But yes, bit invest essentially invested the time and energy to learn about MMA and actually try to do something right, and and I can appreciate that and respect that. I watched the uh, the Home Alone remake. Oh boy! On Disney Plus, did you I watch it? I didn't even it? know that came out. Oh yeah, I I watched it Kevin for five McAllister minutes. Or no, no, it's like New kid. It, it's a British kid. Okay. Um, but not everyone's, I don't know. I, I, I read that it was filmed in Montreal. So I thought that was cool. I fell asleep in the first five minutes. Oh, I'm great. Being honest. What an uh, endorsement. Now I'm not, this is not a spoiler, but Buzz does show up. He's in the commercial. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And as Buzz, but he's a cop now. 
This is so, not a spoiler, by the way. Wait, it's in the it's in the trailer. So is it? Does it happen in the U.S. or in the U.K.? No, that's the part I still can't quite understand. I, I, I fell asleep. I'm assuming in the U.S. if Buzz is is not going to be a British fa- the, I think it's a British family living to the, okay. in Got the it. States. Uh, and then I fell asleep. My my kids seemed to like it for the most part. Like, it was a whole big thing. We talked about it all it's day. Never for, gonna watch let's it. be real. It's not for you. It's for them. Well, I just found out yesterday, by the way. Uh, I was at Survivor Series. I don't know if you heard. I was sitting next heard, to our yeah. mutual friend, Riva, who was there as well. What? Yes. <laughs> what? You buried yes. the lead here. Why? Our How? Our mutual friend, Riva, formerly, well, we're formerly of ESPN. She works at ESPN. Uh, her Queen Riva, as I call Queen her. Queen Riva, her husband, is uh, part of the WWE PR team. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. I forgot about that. Anyway, um, I found out Riva. that, uh, yeah, shout out. First time I see her in like three years. Legit. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I love that. Um, I find out that Kieran Culkin is on TV these days. Yeah. He, you Succession. Mean, yeah. I didn't know that. I thought, oh, last no, time I heard of Kieran Culkin was Fuller, Go Easy on the Pepsi. Oh, no. He's a, he's an accomplished actor at this point. I know. Wait, you never saw um, Scott Pilgrim versus the World? No. Oh, great movie. Go go hunt that one down. N- Kieran- and, and Titanic. Yeah, right. I don't believe that. Is that true? No, I said you need to watch both. Oh, films, right, right. So. I thought Kieran Culkin was in Titanic. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> no, no, add that to the list. Um, but uh, I've got one honorable mention. Just, yes. just by the way, quickly. the reason I, re- I brought up Kieran Culkin was Home Alone, but also he was at Survivor Series. Yeah, he's a big wrestling fan. Is uh, he? Big, yeah, big time. I know his no. brother is. Macaulay's, by the way, like a people ask me, uh, people ask me like bucket oh, list interviews. Macaulay? Macaulay's the big fan. He's wrestled. Yeah. Um, he's he's on my bucket list. I, I wrote him a letter one time when I was a kid and he sent me back a signed photo and I put it on my wall. One time, by the way, this is a great. Yeah. Uh, I had to write a book report in I think the fourth grade and I was so obsessed with Macaulay Culkin. I went to see Home Alone five times in the theaters, the first one. <laughs> I was so obsessed with it. Uh, I bought a TV guide. You remember TV yeah, guide? Of course. Like the actual physical those. TV guide? For the covers alone. I, yes. There was a just a two page like Q&A with him. A Q&A. Like, what do you have for breakfast? I like to have, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, Fruit Loops. I did my book report <laughs> <laughs> on this Q and A. On the two page Q and A. Now, was it just transposing the answers in the Q and A, or how did we do a report on this? I'm trying to figure this out. <laughs> I got a really bad grade. I remember. Yeah, I'm very embarrassed. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. <laughs> um, oh my god, that's gosh. incredible. Yeah, I, I don't know what. I'm trying to just imagine how you did anything to, to more than just copied the, the I was just so answer. obsessed with them. I was a real big fan. I mean, that has to happen. That interview has to happen. Yeah, I would love that. That would be great. And I think he's a fight. I know he's a wrestling fan. By the way, what do you yeah. make of all the people who give me crap for covering wrestling? I mean, can they lighten up a bit? Uh, in this day and age, you can find what you like and you can not fi- find and, and remove what you don't like. Get over it. I get a lot of people who are like, can you make a separate feed? For this stuff, <laughs> come on. You want me to start another feed just so that you are, because you're inconvenienced you're shielded from enough it. to where like, like that, that 0. 0.3 second swipe past the content. Like what, why does this bother you so much? Do people get notifications for everything? If so, do me a favor, take me off notifications at this point because it ain't going away. And I just don't understand the, the, the vitriol, the, yeah. the anger. Like, by the way, all these people, they all watch Star Wars. They all watch Game of Thrones. Oh, oh, I see where you're going with this. You know what I'm saying? Like, you guys watch things that are scripted. And by the way, pro wrestling is much more like MMA than any of those things are. Not to say that they even have to be alike. Sure. But how do you not have at least an appreciation for the physical toll, the athleticism? Yeah, I think think it comes from, and this is me playing super armchair psychologist. uh, I think it comes from a place of not wanting to be judged for enjoying it or, or having enjoyed it in the past and projecting a little bit of that. I don't necessarily think that the scripted quote unquote fake nature is what um, is at the crux of the matter. If I'm being honest, I think that's an easy kind of crutch or that's an easy kind of thing to throw out there, but I don't necessarily think that most people are that upset because it's scripted because as to your point, a lot of their favorite programming is and entertainment is scripted. Um, and the elements of pro wrestling are all over MMA. Um, so yeah. So what are they upset about? I think they're upset about being viewed as 
lesser than or juvenile or their own associations, their own kind of, wow, this is going real no, no, this is good. deep, their own associations of what they think pro wrestling is or who consumes it and being embarrassed by that or projecting or not wanting to be lumped in with that as an MMA fan because of the conflation at times. Um, but I don't think that the scriptedness is a, is a valid explanation for why, why you should be upset about pro wrestling. Yeah, no. I certainly agree with that. Uh, you had an honorable mention. Yeah, honorable mention to the fighters who called out Cody Durden's rhetoric in ah. his post-fight press conference. Um, not one person, obviously. A lot of fighters took to it, but it signifies to me a change in times. It, sig it signifies to me a change in what is viewed and deemed as acceptable. And I thought the response to it was heartening to see that people were not going to just give this a pass and not just ignore it and say, no, that's wrong. Uh, some going as far as to say, let me fight the person. And yeah. again, maybe, look, maybe this was a calculation. Maybe this was something that, and we have seen in the past with characters like Colby Covington, where there are opportunities to make this um, lucrative. Um, but it was nice to see it not just fly under the radar or get laughed off. And even on the broadcast, it was just treated with uh, with recognition and then, and then moving on from it um, as opposed to highlighting it. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, Good, good to see the evolution in MMA. Couldn't um, agree more. Uh, you'd like to see more of that. We've come a long way. And I'm not going to be that guy. But, you know, maybe a two, three sentence statement from the organization saying, we don't support this. We don't condone this. And you can do whatever you want to do. Who knows if that, you know, what is that thing called that they have? Um, you know, the policy, the what was it called? The ca Not character policy. Um you know what I'm talking about, like that they that that we talk about sometimes about behavior, about like there's 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 supposedly a list of things you can and can't do. Yeah. What was that called? Or, um, Somebody I'm, slack him. Yeah, someone slack me. Casey's gonna slack me, or maybe Sean's gonna slack me here. You know what I'm talking about the uh, ah. Is anyone writing me here? Let's see. I mean, I know what you're talking about. I don't know. Anyway, there's a policy, right? Sure. Behavior, something yeah. policy. They're, they're like, look, we don't condone this sort of thing. Compliance or, or whatever yeah. we'll call that, like, yeah. Just a sentence. Some things yeah. were said. We don't condone them. No harm, no foul. It doesn't hurt you guys to do that. And I think it would mean a lot to a lot of your viewers and to a lot of your locker room as well. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. And I think um, the fight— uh, what, Code what I will of say, conduct. Code of, there you go. Code I mean, of conduct. And Kay, you nailed it. Casey hey, would be the it. one. He's um, the only one who's watching, I think, at this point. <laughs> I will say— um, that is significant, but I think the fighters speaking means the most because those are the peers, those are the people, those are the people who are being represented. Sure. Um, it, this is a fraternity, or or I don't know, I don't know if there's a co-ed version of that of that word fraternity. Um, but these sorority. These, well, that's that's the female or fraternity the, answer. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, so whatever the whatever the mix yeah. of those two is, somebody who knows Latin or, or Casey, let Greek. us know what the mix is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but for all intents and purposes, these are peers, these are colleagues, and these are people saying, no, like we, this doesn't represent us. We don't stand for this. So um, it was good to see. Yeah, it, was it was good to see the, the reaction to that um, without it getting uh, even nastier than it, than it needed to uh, escalating that even further. All right. I think this was a good reintroduction of uh, Rick's Picks. Can Rick's I make one, one suggestion? I mean, I think this was actually great. You brought up things that I probably wouldn't have touched on. No mention me. of Caitlin Vieira, by the way, today on the program. She did have a big win, but it was just sort of... Yeah, the, I'm trying to do a little bit outside. No, no, no. I'm not saying the... you. I'm saying me. That's on me. By the way, oh, okay. I like the fact that you didn't pick the the obvious. But can I just make one suggestion? I mean, like, a, yeah. you, you work in a visual media. I mean, a couple, of, you know, photos of the baby, the Henry. I mean, just a few things. Mr. Mr. Monday Afternoon can't be bothered. I, I we'll mean, see. We'll see. Something to dress it up. I mean, we'll already your background is... Uh, you know, there's, there's contrary to, to what you may believe, there's things going on here that a picture, attention that, a picture, that, just a picture of Suhuda with the baby. Yeah. You know, may, maybe a we'll picture see. of Iaquinta. No, no promises. The flag. No promises. No All promises. Right. We'll see. Thank, Thank you, you very much, sir. We'll see you next Monday. Yes. There he is. Full screen. All right. Matter of moments. We're going to check in with GC now from his stop. Uh, I did want to address one thing. The elephant in the room right over here. Before we get to GC, uh, there's been a lot of talk about this real estate. And uh, I want to let you all know that after a lot of soul searching, after a lot of internalizing, I have come to a decision. And uh, dare I say, I have had a change of heart. 
for a few reasons. Number one, um, yesterday was a, a dark day for me. My Buffalo Bills got beat down by the Indianapolis Colts. And, you know, I, I wanted to know if my new best friend, Patrick McAfee, would be there as a uh, shoulder to cry on. Of course, he's a former member of the Colts. And what did he do? In fact, he rubbed it in. He kicked me while I'm down. And it actually wasn't the first time in our newfound friendship that he kicked me uh, while I was down. And uh, that one hurt. It stung. But uh, I didn't really make a big stink out of it because, quite frankly, uh, later in the evening, I was going to be at Survivor Series. I figured, you know, we'd catch up. We'd hobnob, we'd talk, we'd chit-chat, you know, maybe we'd do a little fist bump, something. Uh, in fact, it felt as though he went out of his way to ignore me, to not acknowledge me. And that hurt. And so I started to think about things and uh, I started to realize that, you know, this man is actually not my friend. And I have put him up there on the wall. I've given him the most prime real estate in the business and I'm not sure if he deserves it, quite frankly. Feels like he's a what have you done for me lately kind of guy. Feels like he's a bit of a social climber and he's not really uh, supportive of me in my time of need. It, it seemed like he was more opportunistic than supportive. And I'm not that guy. I'm not the kind of person who condones that type of behavior. I'm not the type of person who wants to, uh, you know, shed a positive light on that type of behavior. And then I started to think about my old friend, DC. And let's be honest, uh, it wasn't a great Saturday for DC. Uh, a couple fumbles, a, cum a couple tumbles here and there. Um, but I, I felt, as, as he put it, I, f I felt like we, were, we, were, we weren't working ourselves into a shoot because if I'm being honest, there was no working on this part. There was no working on this part. But I, I didn't like the way we were trending. I didn't like the direction we were going. I didn't like that feeling. Uh, and then we got, you know, his new best friend, Ryan Clark, getting way too serious. I mean, low-key threatening me, if I'm being honest. I mean, it felt like a low-key threat. If I'm going to be honest here, no one's going to bring that up, but that's okay. Uh, I just didn't like, I just, I, I didn't feel good about it. All weekend, I didn't feel good about it. And so I'm going to be the bigger person. I'm going to take the high road. For one day only, high road Helwani is back. Petty Wani off to the side. And I'm going to extend an olive branch. Now, the awkward thing about this is I will be able to address it. He won't be because he has to ignore everything that I do here. That's just, but you know what? I'm going to be the big person. I'm going to, I feel good. Like I said, last night I was with my kids backstage. Times are good. It's Thanksgiving. You got great guests. You got great people. Everyone's happy. The stars are aligning. I don't want this type, as, as we try to move on into 2022 with positivity, with good vibes, with good fortune, I, I want that in my life. I don't want the negativity. And so this is not a swerve, by the way. This is not a swerve. Without further ado, I'm going to extend the olive branch right now. And I think a lot of you think I'm about to swerve you. I'm not about to swerve you. I'm telling you, I'm about to extend the olive branch and I'm going to say, bygones be bygones. If you want to come on, great. If not, no big deal. I know that you have um, taken advantage of our relationship. You've forgotten about me. You have left me in the dust. You have stabbed me in the back, dare I say. But you know what? I'll be... You know, I'll be the bigger person. I'll be the better friend. I will now reveal this picture and let you all know. Do we have any music, Frank? Is there, I mean, I didn't tell you about this, but there we go. Okay, here we go. Thank you, Frank. Shout out to Virna. Shout out to the Adelaide Crows. Oh, is it just one quick thing? Was it like a full song? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, I was supposed to do it. Do it one more time. Can you do one more time for me? Sure, bud. There it is. Here it is. Here it is. My old friend, my old friend DC. Uh, let's bury the hatchet. I am swallowing razor blades right now. I know your bosses won't let you, you know, talk about me, tweet me, visit me, but I'm going to be the bigger person and you will always be a part of my life. You'll always be a part of this show and you'll always be a part of my career. And so here I am replacing the DC photo as an olive branch to that side of the table, even though low-key I was threatened, even though like some of the shots, schmuck, all that stuff. Back where it belongs, right over here. See, I could be the bigger person. I could be a mensch. And in fact, I'm gonna fix this situation right over here. That's it. There's, there's, no, there's no gimmick here, guys. I know you're waiting for something. You're waiting for the music to hit. You're waiting for something, but this is just something I felt as I walked into the studio today. And if I'm being honest, 
Pat McAfee, two words for you, bang. You're not a good friend. You didn't have my back. You were opportunistic. You kick me while I'm down. What's worse? Not visiting or not saying hello when you're literally 10 feet away from each other. That's not what friends do. And so the gauntlet has been thrown down. There is now a war once again between us and the Pat McAfee show. They want to go head to head with us? We'll go head to head and we'll steal your viewers one by one. Guess what? Aaron Rodgers Tuesdays, we'll come back with Josh Allen Wednesdays. Working on that. I don't have him actually booked for the show. I'm just trying to work on that. I'm trying to one up him. In any event, uh, I feel better now. Things feel like they're back to normal. Frank, you like this? You think things are back to normal now? It feels good I, for I you? I feel safer already. Yeah, it feels better. I don't want, you know, I, I don't want that smoke. You know, a lot of other people, they thrive off of that negativity. They thrive off of that hatred, the beef, the drama. I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. So look, tough Saturday for my guy. Here I am, Olive Branch, Love, McAfee, dead. I don't even know where the photo is. I don't even know where the photo is. Where's the photo? Oh, here's the photo. One second. Here's the photo. Here's the photo right here. Patrick, you are dead to me. <laughs> Who did that back in Brazil? Dead to me. Don't ever ask me back on your show. Don't ever ask me to be your friend. My team loses in embarrassing fashion. We're at the event. You don't even say hello. Disgusting. Quick word from our sponsors. Hey. Football fans. How can I talk about football now that I just talked about Patrick McAfee? That disgrace. I knew you need to clean in and out, so let me just gather myself here for a second. I'm a little down on football, if I'm being honest. Bills are losing. They're playing Thanksgiving. They're about to... Oh, it's going to be a very stressful Thursday. Okay. <clears throat> football fans, I'm sure we all love an action-packed, high-scoring NFL game, but with the latest no-brainer from DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, you'll be a winner... Once a single point scored, new customers who bet just $1 on any team to score can win $100 in free bets. It's that simple. If Sportsbook isn't available in your state just yet, you can still get in on all the NFL action. Everyone can play for huge cash prizes all season long with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Sports Contest. DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes with their first deposit. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today. Use the code DMMAR. Bet $1 on any team to score and win $100 in free bets if they score. You score with promo code DMMAR this week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL and the MMA hour. Must be 21 or older. New Jersey, Indiana, or PA only. New customers only. Minimum $5 deposit required and $1 wager required. One per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Now let's go to the other member who's back. There he is. <laughs> Look at this corner. <laughs> this is a great corner. I don't know. It, it feels like I'm holding you guys captive back there. Yes, this this looks like a hostage video for real, especially with the lighting and everything. Yeah. What are we What are we gonna do yeah, about I'm it? Like jammed in this this corner. There's yeah. No, there's no size comparison. To but this is great. This like you can talk at any point. Yeah. Any any point we can hop can in. Talk. Or... Frank can talk. Still working on Joe. One of these days we're gonna get Joe on. Joe's got a lot of Joe's lot very of, uh, mysterious. Smack to talk with this with uh, the, Patriots the Patriots now. I know. Don't even bring it up. It's a very. I mean, what about Patrick? Right? What a friend. <laughs> I mean, you you ripped the picture, man. That was that's gonna get back to him. That uh, was bold. You know what? Me. I don't mind. I better have a thank you in my text messages from Daniel Cormier. I don't got nothing. Yeah, you built one bridge yeah. with DC, and now you've just, burned another one with with Mac. I might have, yeah, I might have uh, bombed that bridge. But he didn't say any. That's uh, he didn't say hi. I was, yeah, I he was saw shocked. me. I was shocked. Yeah, yeah. eye contact, saw me. I mean, oh, he, he saw you guys me. Literally yes. locked eyes. And yeah, even I even texted him. I even texted him. In fact, what I texted him was, "You suck, bro," because I saw him see me in the middle of his thing. Didn't even. I didn't get a nod. I didn't get a head. I didn't get an arm, a finger, a tip of the cap. I got nothing. So I. I 
in the wrestling business. Did he text you back? Are we sure that he recognized you? Definitely. He said, I see you. So, I mean, it felt like in the wrestling business. Come and meet the kids or anything. Yeah, he was no selling me. I mean, Paul Heyman's coming to meet the kids. Becky Lynch, Seth Rollins. I mean, they're sweating. They're after their matches. He can't even be bothered. Anyway, uh, what do we got? Good weekend for us? It was a decent weekend. I mean, back on top. We won. Yeah, we won, which is good, you know. Uh, not much. It's honest work over here. We finish up uh, a little bit over a unit. Um, you know, we can dive into the singles here on the on the recap. We we go one and two on the singles. weren't really uh, really that close. We can get the graphic up here. There there it is. Yeah, Soriano wasn't really that close to getting ended. Adrian Yanez, I should have known better with with Davy Grant's chin. I mean, that guy just he is tough, dude. He eats punches. And then the yah yah. Uh, Kyung Ho Kang over two and a half. We uh, we had to sweat that one out, but we got that. And then uh, the parlays, we actually did well in the parlays this week. Uh, we hit two of them, um, and then we we come one short on the air fryer. Second time we've done that in four weeks. We come uh, we come one short. We go seven for eight. <sighs> come come that close to hitting. Who was the eight? My eyesight. Yeah, it was the it was the Soriano fight. Doesn't uh. go the distance. That's where I missed it. So. It was the first. It was or it was the second leg of it, so it kind of got killed. How early. annoying is that? It, it's like I didn't even realize it until like a few hours after the card ended. Oh my! I God. was like, "Oh wow, we really went seven for eight there. Like we were, we were that close to hitting it, and we let, the day of we lose the McKinney fight. I, yeah. I felt good about that one not going the distance, so that was definitely a bummer to lose that. But and it was just going to be a good fight, but. It is what it is. So the overall recap here, we go uh, we go one and two, lose a little on the singles, gain it back on the parlays. You know, not a huge week. Nothing nothing to write home about, but Listen, it's, it's a winning week, you know? Yeah, it's a winning week. By the way, for the air fryer, brick th- by brick. does it have to be a certain number of fights? No. Nah. No, nah, usually, it's usually just like a, a larger parlay. I try to get it over 1,000 each time, um, but we lost the McKinney fight, so it dropped down to like 938. Gotcha. Uh, so I typically it's just a parlay that's over plus a thousand. Gotcha. Enough to get us the air fryer. Man, what would that have been? If if the Soriano yeah. fight had not gone the distance, yeah, we would have ended up like up six units on the ah, week. Damn. <laughs> yeah. So it's like it's like that. It's it gets that close, you know, if you get one fight to go your way. Uh, you know, one of these weeks it's gonna hit. I, I got all I got all the faith in the world. Huh? I got all the faith in the world. I feel like we're back on track. I feel like the uh, the mo I feel like the mojo's back. It's oh man, it's back. It's back. We uh you know going into the off week, it, it feels good to you know being able to sit on a on a winning week heading into. So the is this week. an off week? I mean, there's no UFC. Oh, we're just UFC. I mean, I th- what about triad, triad combat? Yeah, you really want me to do the <laughs> triangle, the triangle betting? I mean, I'm going to be betting on like you know college hoops and stuff. But uh, uh, Thanksgiving's you know. a big college hoops weekend. I mean, yeah, college is feast week. We get a bunch right. of tournaments, NFLs going on, stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, that's going to be being placed. For sure. Yeah, no, I just feel like it's very, It's you know, you got MMA, known MMA stars, Frank Mir, Matt Mitrione, et cetera, uh, Albert Tumanov, Platinum Perry, fighting known boxing stars in a triangle, in a triangle ring. I mean, at by the way, at whatever the ballpark in Arlington is called these days, the Rangers ballpark, it's a big yeah. freaking stadium. You find, meta- uh, is it just like Glory, you find lines on it, I'll place a bet on it. It's uh it's it's a it's a Metallica concert with a you know with a with it's an a triangle card, boxing. Or, yeah, not a, yeah, I don't even yeah. know what it is. Uh in fact we'll have a couple of those guys on the show on Wednesday. So we I don't even really know what the rules are, if I'm being honest. Um so we'll maybe learn. Maybe a I'll deep bit dive more. into it. Yeah, maybe I'll deep dive into it, see if there's You're right a, though. Who's putting the lines out for that? That's gonna be tough. Yeah, I imagine there's not gonna be much. What's it on? Triller? Uh, I think it's a thriller card, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but there'll be a couple lines out. Those are ones that they'll only come out like probably Friday or Thursday, Saturday, yeah. right? Yeah, late, kind of like the Bellator cards. Um, so yeah, that's that's actually November. That's like that's all we got for MMA in November. Wow. Only so like what do we weeks. end up with? Yeah, we ended up down. Like I, I, I need to go back on the chart. Yeah, I think like four or five units. Um, so what does so that yeah. mean for the donation? Gonna have to be a pretty hefty donation, a couple hundred dollars. So wait, if you would have been up, what would it have been? Whatever it was up, but 50%. Oh, right, right. See, but I, karma, I, I dug this hole myself yeah. with karma by being like, yo, I, I would match the losses 100% yeah. and donate them. So, I mean, what are we going to do when we're fighting an uphill battle against karma? Like yeah. 50% of the winnings, that was that was me being a cheapskate. So, I mean, 
December we'll be back. We'll be back. How about yeah. Stipe? Shout out to Stipe rocking the stash in yeah. November, man. He, he looks good doing it. And too. not even have like, like, he doesn't even have like a site or anything. He's just like doing it for awareness. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll post a picture of him and, and link mine. Yeah. I'll try and get some donations off of his. Back. I thought he looked at, now are you going to keep it in December or what? No, no. Beard's coming back starting December 1st. I mean, I have to shave this every week. I got to keep it up. I got to maintain it. Well, I think it actually looks better when you shave it. Yes. No, yeah. Makes yeah. it more pronounced. Yes. Sticks yeah. out more. As, as soon as it's shaved, I think that's that's the peak, but it grows back quick, man. Did you watch Survivor Series last night? No, I was at the Islanders game. Oh, that was last night? Yeah. Sunday night game? Sunday night game, man. Wow. Second night in the arena. I thought we, uh, that was cool. So give us the, give us the scouting report, because, you know, the UFC has been to uh, Long Island, so has... Uh, Bellator, the old... I mean, it was a fantastic arena. Yeah, UBS Arena, brand new arena. It's the second game for the Islanders so far. I mean, I would go back in a heartbeat. It's it's an incredibly nice arena. Could probably work on the parking. Parking parking Parking's situation was tough, yeah. What it was, was it? Was there no parking lot? No, there's parking lots. You just got to drop some some pretty big bread to uh, uh, to park there. But, I mean, you know, super nice arena. It doesn't take away from the arena. The 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 atmosphere, The it's like they got a giant LED screen that, like... It's it's super technologically advanced. So yeah, super nice arena. It's got that new arena smell. Uh yeah. Yeah. I, I mean they got the crazy movie. food. They got all this wild, like they had air fryer Chinese food. They had uh wow. they had all these like uh crazy chicken sandwiches and burgers. By the way, before I met you, I never heard of the term air fryer. I don't think I uh, maybe it's, I mean it's not a term, it's a it's a device used for Yeah, cooking. I never heard anyone actually use like how do you know if it's air fried or I mean I can't believe I don't even own an air fryer. I can't believe how much it, it comes up in my life at this point all because of that one kid buying it with the winnings. Now I'm going to this uh, I mean there was a dude standing outside of the concession stand and he was screaming air fryer cooked chicken come on. here. I was just like the DraftKings promo last week. I mean it was Yes, insane. it is weird. It's getting ridiculous. Yeah, my roommate has one and he loves it. Do you use it, or is he one no, of those? You know? No, I got to get my own. I got to get my. Is that own. a thing? No, I mean I could use it if I wanted to. I'm going to earn my own. That's what I'm going to do. I feel like someone in your family. In honor of you. Rohan, I'm going to do that. No, I, I won't accept Christmas? it. I'll return no? it. I'll right. return it. <laughs> We're going to get this ourselves. We're going to earn this air fryer. I don't want the one DraftKings are giving out. We're going to get the air fryer. Have they reached out to you about this? No, no. I really think that was coincidence. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it could be anything else. But now, did someone hit big? Someone hit big. Yeah. Someone familiar with the show, actually. Who's that? Uh, our man, UFC gambling pick em MMA bets, better known as Tony. Wait, we threw the same it, guy? We threw it out there, yeah, that it's just randomly Tony. His name is Tony. Yes. Yeah. Same guy hits. We actually have the graphic here. Okay. Last week, if you weren't tuned in, he hit a plus 247,652 <laughs> parlay last week, $5 to win 12000 this week, he follows it up. 12 legs, technically 11 because we lost the McKinney fight. UFC, NBA, soccer, college basketball, plus 53,146. $35 to win 18,601 in just two short weeks. Our man, Tony, UFC pick em MMA bets, turns $40 into $30,000. Holy smoke. Back-to-back weeks, yeah. That is insane. I mean, it's insane. Plus I couldn't believe it. Fifty three thousand one hundred and forty six. Yes, there's the ticket right there, man. And there's no way he's photoshopping this. I mean, I know what book he's using, and no, I do not think he's photoshopping this. I mean, he he posts the plays like as he's going along with it. I mean, like he was getting down. He was getting down with it. Georgia State at Richmond is on this. That Hofstra is- at Iona. He's betting on Rick Patino games. Like this is, uh, you know, Clippers. Uh, a, a draw between Levante and Real Betis. I think that's La Liga. Like, this is a ridiculous parlay. And uh, yeah, it works out for him. Good for him. I've yeah, never I seen mean, such fantastic. a thing before. I got to shout him out. I got to yes. shout him out. I'm not only going to give him the shine, though. I actually got three honorable mentions. I guess oh. this is just the honorable mention episode of the MMA yeah. Hour. Just three quick guys. Jay Eastoff. Uh, he hits one for 1300 but he hit nine parlays on Saturday. He sent me all the tickets, but I don't got enough room on the graphic uh, to do that. Yeah, my guy Josh Paul. It was. I, I think he said he was finished up 46 units. He said he's going to buy a pair of noise-canceling headphones. So wow. shout out to Josh. Cornbread Locks, this guy. Ronnie Yaya takes him live after the first round after Yaya just got wobbled the oh. whole round. Throws two hundred fifty dollars on him at, at plus seven hundred. So like, what compels you to do that? I do. I have no idea, but it's cornbread locks, man. You can't doubt yeah. the guy because it works out Great for name. him. Yeah, a uh, fantastic name. And then his, I think the emoji is literally just corn and bread. So we we don't know his name either. And then Tyler, please. 
you know, looks like a couple of the picks may have been inspired from the MMA hour, but we're not going to take credit for it. No, I mean, it's a plus nineteen hundred parlay. So, shout out to them, man. It's hard. It's hard to win gambling in this sport, and uh, it seems like every week, a couple winners are uh, are coming out. So it's it's cool to see them uh, cashing big tickets like that. Wow, that's plus. Again, my, I, I'm wearing glasses. And my eyesight sucks. Plus, is that a 1903? Yeah, 1903. He threw a little. Uh, he threw a little Terrence Crawford in rounds nine uh, through twelve in that one. Damn. Way. So that must have been. I mean, that's a sweater. That must have been pretty crazy. I, I don't know how these people have the balls to do this. If I'm being honest. I mean, I love the combo parlays, like Jay stuff. Our our boy Jay's throwing in Patriots minus six, just. Just for the hell of it. Just for the hell of it. It's just like all MMA, and then, yep, you know, we got Thursday Night Football. Might as well kick this ticket off early. And then Yaya Live. I mean, yeah. So, Are these people just sending these to you? I actually asked for them this week. I I wanted the tickets. I mean, I was so impressed with with. No, I like this. This is a great Um, segment. Yeah, I mean, I think think it's cool. I think it's fascinating to see, like, I mean— I now that we, now that I got all this real estate yeah. here, I got all this open space. I might have to open up a little Hall of Fame, and it's going to start off wow. with our man Tony, better known as UFC gambling pick 'em MMA bets. That's a great so, idea. Yeah, the faceless man known as Tony might have to go right here. I saw he uh, he posted. I tried to find out more on him, but uh, there's nothing there. We don't know where he lives. He keeps it lock and key, man. And the only reason we even know is Tony. He gave us one guess, gun to the you know gun to the head, and we guessed right. It's come Tony. on. Who's I, we? I said it was Tony last week, and yeah. they hit me up on IG. I was just pulled a name out of thin air. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, Tony or something. And he messaged me, and he was like, it's actually you're kidding Tony. me, dude. It's actually Tony. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so Tony. Respect. Shout out to him, man. Yeah, un- unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable couple of weeks for him. I, he told me he was going to take a few weeks off now. I guess go on vacation what? or something. Yeah, he's exhausted. <laughs> Celebrate the life. Emotional investment in these picks. Can't imagine. By the way, any good AFL lines out there? Australian Football League? <laughs> yeah, I saw you sold out. Everybody's on I your sold out. Now. Man, I got to tell you, the hate that I've received for this decision. This is a fantastic jersey. The Adelaide Crows. This is high-quality stuff. The hate that I received for this. This right here. No, Read it and weep. Wear? Is that it? They wear a tank top? Yeah. Well, you've never seen rugby before? I don't. I feel like every time I've seen them, they wear like the polos, like the super no, tight polos. No. This is AFL, Australian Football League, okay? Get with the times. You remember a couple of weeks ago, someone wrote, maybe you were not listening, someone wrote on the nose, hey, will you support the Adelaide Crows? I said, if they send no, me. No, I do remember this, yeah. If they send me some merch, I'm all in. Now, the funny thing about this is, a lot of outlets over there were writing about this. I saw the Fox <laughs> AFL. Hey, you got front page of, the, of an Australian yeah. newspaper? I don't know about front page, but they tweeted about it. They called me a UFC broadcaster. Close enough. I mean, I was a little insulted. What did you want, MMA but, journalist? Well, I mean, I'm not a UFC broadcaster. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, the UFC, that can get a little dicey. Yeah, someone who's like, oh, someone who broadcasts UFC content, whatever. But I have to say, uh, I got some stickers here. I might put one on my laptop. I don't know. But the Adelaide Crows were the mighty Adelaide Crows. A lot of people, supposedly, I think uh, Megan Anderson, I heard, is a fan. Rhea Ripley, who's uh, a, a WWE wrestler. Um, but this jersey right here, I mean, it was just a really nice gesture. I don't know how they got my address, by the way. They just sent it to me. No, I'm kidding. They DM me. I was about. I was about to say. Yeah, actually, kind of weird. I uh, couldn't give you a Helwani on the back of the back of the jersey. You know, I have to say, I thought of that. I thought uh, I was like, oh wow, I'm about uh, to get. Yeah, I thought of that. It was. Ju- it's just like a replica. You know, look at that. There it is. Yeah, I, I have to say, I did think of that. Um, When's the American tour? Are they coming to MetLife or something? It'd be nice. It'd be nice. Maybe I could go out on the field, wave to everyone, pretend like I've been a long time UFC fan. broadcaster Ariel yes. Helwani, long time uh, Adelaide <laughs> Crows fan. Good day, mate. Uh, supposedly Patty Mills. Oh yeah, Patty Mills. Yeah, supposedly he's a fan. Uh, that's what I heard. So um, anyway, just blown away by the hate. Like I could pull up. So there's that cesspool on DM. I don't know if you get that. Like you get the DMs, but then there's like the requests, additional requests. Yes. Yeah, you, yeah, if yeah. I if I venture there sometimes just to see what the you know the real fans quote unquote are saying, yeah. it could get it could get dicey over there. It could get real nasty. Yeah, and I mean, I can imagine. I can imagine. I am a nobody, and I've I've you get some of that. Some yes, dicey some dicey things every once in a while. So usually it's about like MMA stuff. This week it was a nice you know you know what a Venn diagram is. Yes, I'm aware of what a Venn diagram is. This week, it was pretty much a Venn diagram of AFL hate and pro wrestling hate mixed into one. And it was yeah, like, the pro wrestling, that, <laughs> that gets the hate going, man. Oh, I mean, 
Oh, oh, oh. Take a take a scroll down the uh, the uh, YouTube chat. Any any moment you start talking about WWE, oh, it's it I love gets it. fiery. Uh, I went. Uh, I was backstage, and a lot of the guys came up to me. Love the yeah. show. I mean, it looked awesome. Love MMA. No, they came up to me about the MMA stuff. The wrestlers, they're about to get ready to go out, and they're coming up to me and saying, "Yo, Ariel, love the show." One guy, Jinder Mahal, was like, "Heelwani in the house." I was like, "Yo, Jinder, what's up, man? That's crazy." <laughs> The modern day Maharaja. So yeah, that's nice. I feel like I'm bridging the gap. Eventually the work will be done. We'll bridge the gap between the two worlds. Everyone I will say, there. had I not been at the Islanders game, I would you have watched. watched. I you had a little bit of investment. I would have watched Survivor Series last night. It would have been my first WWE watch since like 2001, the Goldberg days. Right, right, right. Uh, so yeah. yeah. You, you went home, you checked. Watched. You were following online. I don't know who won. I know that Becky won. You yeah, know. you just wait. You just want to want. Wasn't there a main event after Becky? Oh, Roman right, Reigns right, right. Yeah, actually, she was the opener. They they pulled the little Michael Chandler, Justin Gaethje. Oh yeah, you got to get the big name. Yeah, I mean, Becky's she's my favorite wrestler. You know, she comes on the MMA. So That's it. We'll That's all it supporter. takes. Yeah, they pulled the Michael Chandler, Justin Gaethje. They opened the show with it, and uh, yeah, the crowd was hot. Dare I say, it was the best thing on the show. The rest was a little comsi comsa. Roman Reigns won the main event, yeah. by the way. Yeah, you had to come over to my neighborhood, over to Brooklyn. I had to go to Brooklyn, yeah. Yeah, Brooklyn Burks in the house. That's right. That's right. Brooklyn Burks, Bellator Books. Burks, uh, we got Bellator coming back on December 3rd, so not this I think it's the last. Yeah, I think it's the last Bellator event of the year. That's right. And a big Finish one. Finish off with a bang. Got to. Kyoji Horiguchi versus Sergio Pettis. Of course, we'll have a, a lot more time to talk about that. Uh, anything else to share? No, I think that's it, man. All right. I don't know what we do on Wednesday. Pick our favorite Thanksgiving. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I forgot. Um, that's a good point. Well, I want some triad. By the way, is it triad or triad? You are asking me. Triad. Awesome. Is it triad? I mean, yeah. It's well, a triangle, not a triangle. I'll let you all know, most of the people back there won't care about this. New York Rick, is he even still here or did he leave? No, he bolted. Yeah, yeah, he did, eh? I mean, yeah, yeah. He has something with his daughter. Okay, that's I'll so funny. I was going to make fun of him. But I mean, this guy. I mean, he's just—he just literally shows up for his spot and then he leaves. That's incredible. Um, longtime fans of the show would love to know. There used to be a segment on this program called the Mitrion Minute. Matt Mitrion used to come on and roast the MMA community. Uh, times have changed. A lot of the things he and his friend Sean McCorkle said in that segment, I don't think would fly in this day and age. And it wasn't that long ago, but this is like 2012, 2013. Very excited to share that Matt Mitrion will be back on the show this Wednesday in his long-awaited debut on the new era of the MMA Hour, or return, if you want to say, debut, depending on how you view this. Uh, he was on the final episode. He was one of our last guests oh, back wow. in 2018. He was on the final episode. I saved him for one of the final slots. And so he's on the triad combat yeah, card. Alexander Flores, yeah, Alexander Flores. Yeah. So show. it felt like an apropos time to get uh, Meathead back and uh, have I mean, him on I'm, the show. I'm, I'm scouring... I'm scouring the internet right now looking for lines. We're going to find them. Wait a second. Wait a second. Something big is happening here. Hello? Daniel, I'm live on the air right now. It appears as though you called me. Did you call me in the middle of our show? I did. I was on the phone with EK. I was on a new best friend, EK. I mean, it's not EK, it's EJ, it's GC. Uh, might have been a subtle shot at you, but listen, we're live on the air right now, Daniel. I had, uh, you know, I had some mixed motions. I'm holding I the phone. It. I saw it. You saw, saw the clip? It. I saw it. Hey, all is well now. Now, now what I don't want to say is that um, I wasn't, I was never going to beat you up. Okay. I was never going to beat you up. That was all a joke. I was kidding. I think I think maybe your partner low key threatened me, but that's neither here nor there. Here, here, here's the thing. Though. Here's the thing, Ariel. Mm -hmm. Um, I hope this decision was made based on your thoughts. I know people within my family were very worried that you and I weren't getting along. I don't know if you had that on your side. That's such a lie. That's such a lie. You're such a liar. I can't tell you right now, my, my cousin called me like, hey, man, what's going on? He was very scared. People from my family were worried that you and I were starting to lose our path. We can't have that happen. I hope that people on your side showed concern. Was anybody concerned? My mom called me with a look on her face <laughs> like she had just been told that, you know, Santa wasn't real. Like the look of disappointment. 
the look of concern on my dear mother's face on Friday is really what put me over the edge. Uh, I, I, I realized I was not being a bully. She was said, and I quote, why did your former friend call you a schmuck? I don't like that he called you a schmuck. And she was very upset about this. And I said, you know what? We have worked ourselves into a shoot here, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, you did. I didn't work it. Listen, Saturday, you know, Saturday was, was you know, it was, a it was a tough day. Usually on a Saturday like that, we talk about it. I didn't hear from you. I mean, it just, it, it felt empty. You know, I'm, I'm backstage yeah, with your yeah. boy, Seth Rollins. It felt empty. I'm, I mean, this Seth feels... Seth Rollins is the man. Seth Rollins is the man. Yeah. This feels so well, good I'm right glad, now. I'm glad that you finally answered my call. I'm does this feel good? Does this feel good to you it like does. it does for me? Does. Yeah. I appreciate this, Billy and Hatcher. Oh. Hey, you know what? While you're busy with uh, with uh, with your show, yes, and I'm sure that interview with EJ was great. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm at wrestling practice. Wow. So I took time away from my practice to call you and answer your call. Wow. So my man, my friend, thank you. I'm glad the beef is going. That's hey, it. Bro, the world, the world can't, the world can't live with us not being okay. We're okay. Yeah. I'm glad that we're okay. We're okay. Sprawl! Sprawl! <laughs> I gotta get back to Russell. Listen, practice. listen. They could take us away from each other, but they'll never take away what we had. And one day, DC and Hawani will ride again. Now, on Thursday, we're enemies. Bill Saints. But they will hey, never break Saints. us apart. Go Saints. Hey, we gotta get these sprawls off. Thank you for... Hey, okay, but next time, can you not hug everyone when you're in New York? At least, I mean, like, you had to... Why'd you have to hug everyone? <laughs> hey, man, I'm just a huggable guy. Oh, yeah, right. That's right. I love you, DC. Right, I love you so you much, man. I could kiss you right now. Don't you ever. Don't you ever. Bye-bye. Oh! There he is, Coach DC. Bye-bye, DC. All right, later, bud. Bye-bye. <laughs> that was incredible. How about that? Let's get some music, Frankie. Frankie, let's get some music. Um, can you not clap so closely? Sorry, 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 oh, sorry. Yeah. I mean, I'm really excited. I just buried the hatchet with my friend. Now I have to give a great shout out right now to my good friend, the man who is behind all of this, Edwards Kim, EK. Oh, that's why he was saying EK. I was thinking EJ, EK on Twitter in the midst of that whole moment right there tweeted to DC call Ariel Hawani right now he's live on the MMA hour your photo is back up and he wants to bury the hatchet call him now I liked it I wanted to see if maybe that would help he then responds EK I know you're reading these DC the world needs a positive moment this week so please call in right now he follows that up. If DC MMA calls into the MMA hour right now, live and buries the hatchet before Thanksgiving, it will make the entire community happy. Positivity only. Do it, DC. DC then tweets. And by the way, I was afraid that he exposed my phone number because he showed us screen grab. Brother Ariel Hawani, all is well now that the photo is back up. Beef is over. I called you, but it seems like you have an interview, which I know will be good. Happening right now. What a photo, huh? On Thursday, we are again on opposite sides of the war zone. Go Saints, my guy. How about that? And then, thank God, I picked up, I saw the phone because I put my phone on silent, and there it was. I mean, if you're talking about a great Thanksgiving moment, I don't know what's better than that. Are you guys as emotional as I am right now? Between Adrian Yanez, by the way, and all the other stories we heard today in that moment, I'm, I'm emotionally spent right now. What about you guys in the back? Anyone care about this or no? Yeah, we're all in tears. <laughs> this is great. I just didn't feel right. I didn't feel right. Now, the next person who comes after me is, uh, you know, is, is, is <laughs> I mean, they're going to, uh, hell hath no fury like Hiawani, but for now, I'm feeling good. We got a call there. You saw it live. That was live. That was a shoot, brothers. That was live on the air. That was a shoot. Sometimes... You can break up, but so, that was the equivalent of Miss Elizabeth and, and Macho Man coming together, hugging it out. I don't know what other great moment there is in uh, sports and entertainment history, but that was a great moment. I'm emotional. I'm exhausted. We got a show to do on Wednesday, so I'm out of time. You can hear my music, Frank. 
a beautiful moment. That was live. That's why this show is so special. Live. You can't script these things. I'm sweating. I'm exhausted. I need a nap. Yeah. DC and I back together. The fearsome twosome rides again. Beautiful. I was going to say something snarky there, but it wouldn't seem appropriate right now. Listen, guys, I hope you all learned a valuable lesson today. By the way, what about DC and Stipe on the same show? I mean, by the way, Frank, when we put out the um, the title for today's program, can we start off with Daniel Cormier? Like, could he be the first guest? Absolutely. Or... <laughs> is that, I mean, is that, are we, is that like, a, is that dishonest? Okay, all right. I mean, he was on the show. You guys heard it, right? We had, I mean, we had to make the executive call. It's beautiful. What a moment. Thank you, EK. Thank you, Edwards. Beautiful. Is it Ed? Is it Edward? Is it Edwards? I'm not sure. It's sort of like Robert S. Pearson Roberts, but he knows who he is. What a legend. And uh, I will forever be thankful for that moment. I would have been really pissed if I missed the call, if I'm being honest. That would have been bad. Anyway, thank you very much to all our guests today. Whew, thank you to Daniel Cormier. How about that? That was beautiful. Uh, thank you very much to Lupi. Godinez, thank you very much to Mohamed Mohayev, thank you very much to Stipe Miacic, thank you very much to Sean Brady, thank you very much to Adrian Yanez, New York Rick, GC, the crew, DC, all of you. Back on Wednesday, same time and place. Until then, I say peace.